making me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, the still and peaceful waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the depths of righteousness, in the paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is truly my shepherd. Thank you, Lord. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord. We glorify you and you alone, Lord. We lift you up because you alone are worthy to be praised and exalted today. Father, we bind the mind of every satanic force, principality, power, ruler of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places, Lord God, that seeks to destroy your church, Father God. Father, we bind the devil right now, Lord. Every spirit that's trying to hold back those that belong to you, Lord. Those that will come to you, Father. We curse his mission right now, Lord God. Open the eyes of those that you call, Father. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, you will give the fuel to the laborers in your harvest, Lord. Give them everything they need, Lord God. Prepare us as we go out every day, Lord God, to have fresh manna from on high, Lord, to speak down into the souls of these people. And, Lord, we are depending on you to open their ears and their hearts to hear you, Lord God. And, Father, we thank you for it right now, Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord God, that you've done for us, everything that you're going to do, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be a part of your plan. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, because we know that it's an honor and a privilege, Lord God, to know you, Father. Lord, you chose us before the foundations of this world. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll make the most of it, Lord, before we stand before your face, Lord. And you begin to show us our life, Lord God, in you. And, Father, we'll be weighed and measured, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that we don't come up lacking, Father. I don't even know what that would be like, the horror, Lord God, that will come before us when you tell us, Lord God. You've been weighed and measured, but you come up lacking. Father, our God, in the name of Jesus, show us everywhere where we're lacking in our lives, Lord Jesus, so we can get about your business, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the time that you've given us, Lord God, to get it right. And Lord, we exalt the Lord our God and we worship at your holy hill, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your holy name today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us, Lord. Giving us strength to stand, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you're so good. We thank you for everything today, Lord. We don't know and understand how you built us, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that that being on the inside, Lord, that in, eternal being, Lord God, that you created, Lord God, to be housed in this fleshly body, Father. It's strength beyond strength, Lord God. We don't even understand it, Father. But you do. And Lord, you're drawing us deeper and deeper, Lord God, into your love. 
and into your life, Lord God, that's hidden in you, Father. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord God. The days are dark, Lord God. And you see it. But we're going to need some power, Lord God, to go through this one. We're going to need some power, Lord. And we call on your name today, Jesus, because of who you are, Lord Jesus. Because of who you are, Lord. You said, great is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And Lord, we can only trust you. We don't have anything else. You're going to have to do it, Lord God, the level of insanity, Lord God. Three-fourths of the population will be behind bars, Lord God, because of the insanity, Lord Jesus, that's in this world. It's unbelievable. The things, Lord God, that people say and the way they live and the brainwashing that has taken place, Lord God, through the propaganda mediums, Lord God. People's minds have been bewitched. You said it in Revelation 17 that it's only by sorceries, Lord God, that the people have been blinded because of the whore of Babylon. <clears throat> that abomination. Lord God, and it's work and it's work, Father God. But Lord, we thank you for your strength today, Lord God, to be overcomers and to kill off this flesh, Lord God. Who cares about how somebody says something to us? Who are we anyway when we look to you, Father, for all things? Kill off the flesh daily, Lord God, so that you can live. Lord, increase in us, Lord God, and let us die, Lord God. Because if we don't, we're not going to make it, Lord. At the most inopportune time, Lord God, we'll be drawn out into the flesh. And the devil will have access to our lives. Kill us off, Lord Jesus. Kill us off, Lord. We bind every satanic attack, principality, power, ruler, darkness, and spiritual wickedness, Lord God, in high places. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the life that you've given us, Lord, and we put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, Lord God, the breastplate of righteousness, our loins gird about with truth, and our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The shield of faith, Lord God, which quenched the, the darts of that wicked one, Lord God, and the sword of the spirit, Lord Jesus, that's in our mouths. And Lord, we thank you for that today, Father. That there's nothing that we cannot do without you, Lord Jesus. There's nothing, Father God. And we thank you for purging us, Lord God. As you say in John chapter 15, Lord God, that you are the true vine and we are the branches, Lord God. And except you purge us, Lord God, we cannot bear any fruit. Let that fruit come alive in us, Jesus. Everywhere we go, the world don't understand it, Lord God. They don't understand you, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we understand who we are in you, Lord. Never shrinking back, Lord God, to the lies of the devil. Never shrinking back to it, Lord, because we know who we are in you. And Father, we thank you for it today, Lord. Strengthen us as we go forth. Bring forth those that you've called to be saved. Bring them forth, Father God. Every word that we've ever said to them, Lord God. Lord, you bring forth fruit. And Father, we thank you for it today. Lord, I lift up my mother to you today, Lord Jesus. And I ask that you strengthen her today, Lord God. In her spirit, man, Lord Jesus, to wage a war with the enemy. Con constantly, Lord Jesus. We know what the doctors say, Lord God. But we know that you have the final word, Lord, over our lives. Because we belong to you. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Strengthen her, Lord God. Strengthen her, Jesus. And let her salvation, Lord God, be declared and decreed in the heavenlies, Lord Jesus. According to her belief, Lord Jesus. You've given her a long life, Lord God, and we appreciate that, Lord Jesus. Strengthen my family, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord. Open their eyes, Lord God, so they can see you, Jesus, and that somebody might be saved, Lord God. Through all of this, Lord, but I bind the spirit of confusion, Lord God, and strife and animosity, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Because, Lord, I can't look to the left or to the right, Lord. I got to keep going. 
And Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the Son of God. And that you called us before the foundation of this world, Lord God. We'll be hit with tumultuous, Lord God, blows, Father. But Lord, we know that you've given us the strength. Given you to us the strength, Lord God, to persevere. It was this day 22 years ago, Lord, I lost my second brother, Lord. And I thought about it this morning, but Lord, you gave me the strength. You gave me the strength, Lord, the first time, the second time, the third time, Lord Jesus. And all of us have lost loved ones, Lord Jesus. Supernaturally, Lord, you brought us through. And we thank you for keeping us, Lord. We pray for bereaved families all over this world. Strengthen them, Jesus. Strengthen them, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God. I hear my mama pray over food every day, Lord God. Asking you, Lord God, to feed those that are hungry, Lord God. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord God, and the humility to serve you, Lord. And to serve others wherever we go, Lord. Show us how to pour out our lives, Lord Jesus. Show us, Lord, how to pour out, Father, to everybody we meet. And to humble ourselves, Lord. Because how us as a sinner to act, Lord God, accept the way that they do. Because they don't know you, Jesus. They don't know you like we do, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus, on their souls, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. They need you, Lord. They need a Savior, Lord God. They need a Savior, Jesus. They need a Savior, Jesus. Help, Lord God, in the time of need. Help them, Jesus. Help them, Lord. Help, Lord God, these young mothers, Lord God, that don't know anything about raising these babies, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, they just become so, Lord God, just so tired, Lord, and weary, Lord Jesus. Because they bit off more than what they could chew, Lord God. They didn't understand, Lord God, the sacrificial life of giving, Lord God, when you're a mother. Help them, Jesus. Help these young guys that's, Lord God, that's just out here just, just spewing all over the place, Lord God. Bring these babies in the world, Lord. They don't understand either, Lord Jesus, what it means to be a father. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll reach these folks. All over this world, Lord God. And it's not just a racial thing, Lord God. This is what the world, Lord God, we live in, Lord Jesus. This world, Lord God, the culture, Father God, the music, Lord God, the lifestyle of this world. Lord, it's past anything that we can understand. Every mother that I meet, Lord God. Every one of them, Lord God, that I met this past week, just I just don't understand it. I don't understand why they don't see them, why they don't understand what you're telling them. But Lord, you do. And I pray for their salvation, Lord God. Every young person, Lord, bring them to the feet of Calvary, Father. Give us, Lord God, the words to say to them when we see them. Help us to look beyond what they're saying at the time and what they're doing. Help us to see what you see, Lord God, in everybody. And Father, we thank you for it right now. Lord, we give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. And we dedicate this day to you, Lord, in this time. And we thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. For you are worthy to be praised and exalted. It's in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. All right, how's everybody doing this morning? I hope everybody's having a good day thus far. And a good week as the week begins. Welcome everybody by way of live stream broadcasting of the World Wide Web. Hopefully you're having a good week also as we begin to see the final culminating stages of the world beginning to take place and it's undeniable as this world is aligning itself with the word of God. It's, go it's happening just like he wrote it down. So we're nearing the end of this age as all the parameters come together as the world must conform to the word of God. God spoke it, he prophesied it, foretold it, and everything on this planet will conform to what God has said based on his foreknowledge. So the best you can do right now is to make preparations for what's about to happen. All right, before we get going today, let's make the announcements as usual. Uh, first of all, I want to remind everybody about the fast 
We've got a 10-day fast starting today, which is October 22nd, which will run through October 31st. 10 days right into Halloween as we deal with this Halloween situation. You know, Halloween is a crazy time of year. Halloween is basically Satan's time of just total depravity and distorting reality to the degree that he has ordained Halloween as this time of high sacrifice. So they sacrifice a lot of human sacrifices on Halloween. And it's the time of the preparation for the winter solstice and it's a high witchcraft time of year it's, it's all about satan's filthy religious systems and how he ordains certain times of the year to celebrate these things you know every may they crown the may queen in witchcraft which is the reigning queen of the witches for that year all this stuff is real and not knowing what we are surrounded by we walk around in a, a conflict all day long in a supernatural world war but for the most part, unaware of it. So during this time of year, we always go on a fast this year, 10 days from today through the 31st, confronting the spirits that govern Halloween, the covens that are made uh, and sustained by Satan, the covens of witches around the world. They come together for prayer and worship of Satan. All of this is real. You find out when you really get born again that you got into a conflict. As that spirit world begins to fold back, you come out of religion and church entity and go into church and you found out, hey, this is real. You know, most folk don't believe that it's real because they don't get into the conflict. But when you step across that divide and you find out that Satan is real and the fallen angels are real and demons are real and it's a real intergalactic warfare being fought, it changes you, and you'll never be the same again. You know, you, you very, very rarely meet, uh, meet somebody that's born again. I'm talking about somebody that's really been birthed by God, and they've entered into this conflict with Satan. So you got to be a person that's for real and focused, and one of the aids to focus in your mind is fasting. Fasting does two things. Coupled with prayer, fasting will deaden the flesh, and it will lift up your spirit. So you want your flesh put down and your spirit, man, lifted up. And you'll find in that process that your mind will automatically be transformed. Your thinking will change. What used to matter to you won't matter anymore. The desire for the cigarettes will go away. The desire for the alcohol and the drugs and all that junk will go away. It'll happen automatically as you deaden the flesh that houses the uh, inordinate desires the desires will go as that old nature dies. See, it's, the battle is not about trying not to do or to do. The battle is to get rid of that thing in us that wants to do and has desires to do. So you deaden that thing and everything else becomes automatic. You feed that, it's going to get stronger. You sit in front of a computer screen looking at porno all day, you're feeding porno. So the pornography is going to get stronger. Whatever you feed and you will live Whatever you starve will die. I always use this uh, depiction of it. You take two little puppies born on the same day. Same mother, same place. You feed one every day you, and you feed the other nothing. Sooner or later, one of those animals will die and it won't be the one you fed. Whatever you feed will live and grow organically. Whatever you starve will die. That's God's way of changing us. After we've been saved, we have the responsibility to present our bodies as a sacrifice, and then you have to go through the mechanical things that are necessary to deaden the flesh so that God's spirit can come upon you and live. So it's all mechanical. You know what most people do? They spend too much time psychologically evaluating problems. Instead of going home, turning that plate over, and doing what is necessary to deaden your flesh, you try to psychoanalyze everything. We, we don't run a psychological institution. You've got to do what's necessary for you to deaden the flesh so that you can make it to heaven. See, it's individual. If you want it bad enough, the Bible says God will withhold no good thing from them that love him. He says you want the Holy Ghost. He says the Father won't give you anything but the Holy Ghost if you ask for it. So you got to ask for the Holy Ghost in order to sustain you in this journey. 
You've got to do what is necessary for you. You don't work for God. You deaden that individual in you that won't work for God. You see, it's a whole different paradigm. Most folks will start talking about works and legalism and the law when, in fact, you're, a, you're a eliminating the individual in you that won't obey any laws, a rebel. That's the only responsibility we have, deaden that part of us that will not, indeed cannot, obey God. That's all you got to do. Why don't most people do it? Because they love the world, they want to enjoy sin, they like sin, and they won't forsake sin. So what do you do when you're trying to stay in sin? You go to church, and you sit up in church as a sinner, damned to hell, never being born again, and you're lost. And you went to church to be lost. That's why the individuals that really do the mechanics to be saved are far and few between. Most folks just go to church with other folks and sit around with them because somebody wanted me to go. They have no appetite for this themselves. You better make this thing an individual affair for you because on judgment day, Jesus is going to send people to hell who did not forsake this world to be born again. It's an individual thing, and everybody must be accountable for themselves. So we're fasting for 10 days, October 22nd today through October 31st, midnight, which is 10 days from now. I think Halloween is on a, I think it's a Tuesday night, I think. But 10 days from now through the 31st, prayer, fasting. Stay in the word of God, bathe yourself in ministerial tapes, listen to praise and worship, cut off the world, get away from that stupid cell phone, the dumbed down computer, your crazy folks you talk to over the phone and you text and you message all day, cut off all of that garbage and dedicate 10 days to just bathing your soul in the word of God and things germane to your spiritual growth. If you don't, what's coming at us is going to be so volatile, you will be swept away in it. I'm going to show you today what we're living in and how volatile it's coming and how strong it's going to be. And if you don't do something about it, you will be swept away into insanity. We got two choices. Either come to Jesus and remain sane or stay out here in the world and go into complete depravity and insanity. And I don't plan on going insane no time soon. And nobody can keep you sane but the Lord Jesus Christ. Fasting 10 days, October 22nd through October 31st. We'll be praying every night, every night. Get together and pray. The prayer line is available every night for those of you around the country and around the world who will be in, engaging in this fast. The prayer line is available every night for prayer. That number, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that number is 641 715-3670, the access code is 409-367-POUND, 409-367, the prayer line is available for people to get together with other saints and pray, 641 715 3670, access code 409367. We try to make tools available for people to use these tools and have access to them to help you. You need help. I need help. All God's children need help. You're not sane because you chose to be. You're sane because God had mercy on you. I mean, if you look back and check your resume... In the world, you were crazy, and you're being delivered from insanity. The stuff you did, the places you went, the things you said were the character traits of an insane person. God is returning sanity to the human mind, but you must avail yourself of the tools he provides to bring you back into a sane realm of thinking. It's bad out here. It's real bad. People are losing their minds every day. And only God can keep you and stabilize your mind. 641-715-3670. Access code 409367. The prayer line. Next thing, we're recommending books for you to read. Two good books, Spiritual Warfare by Dr. Carl I. Payne. Spiritual Warfare, 
Dr. Carl I. Payne, Carl is spelled K-A-R-L, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, available on Amazon.com. Spiritual warfare, unveiling the fact that we're engaged in a warfare, an interdimensional, metaphysical, supernatural, extraterrestrial warfare with fallen angels and demons. You find out real fast when you really get saved, for real. You, you stop going to church and stop being religions, and you get saved. You find out there's a real devil after you. See, when you walk with the devil, you're not conscious of the fact that you're the devil's child, and you're actually just told by the devil what to do. He's inspiring your thoughts. You just don't know it. You got feelings the devil gave you. You got an outlook on life that the devil placed in you. Your perceptions are demonic. Your thinking is driven by demonic powers. But when you get saved and you step away from him, you find out the devil is the one orchestrating everything happening to me. He governs the world. The Bible calls him the God of this world. He is the prince that rules over the powers of the authorities of the air surrounding us. So you're in an interdimensional spiritual warfare with an unseen being. Spiritual warfare. Most church people never engage in it. Most folks sit in church their whole lives, dominated by Satan, not knowing it. And you got to be able to separate from this mess to see what the devil's doing. Carl I. Payne, Spiritual Warfare. Check it out, Amazon.com. Next book, The Organic Gospel, written by myself and Maisha Hunter. This is about the fact that the gospel is organic. <clears throat> it has the power within itself to actually be planted in you and grow out of you. You have a metamorphosis occur as the gospel takes hold of your life and begins to expand into all of the areas that make you you. It takes over your personality. It changes your appetites. It will organically transform you. He'll displace and replace the old you with a new you. The Bible says it this way. God can't put new wine in an old wine vessel. He has to have a new vessel. So you need an organic transformation inside of you for God to fill you. It'll change your thinking, your appetites, your desires all by itself. It's an organic transformation, but you must allow that seed to be planted and go through the mechanics necessary to water, to fertilize, and to incubate that seed so it expands. It's all normal. Everything you see down here reflects the fact that the gospel is organic. The most evident prototype that shows you how the gospel works is the conception gestation and birthing of a child 40 weeks of gestation that number 40 is always transitional in the bible god does a lot of things on 40 day 40 week and 40 year cycles because he's trying to compare it to the birth of a child so the gospel comes in gestates grows christ in you the apostle said it this way in galatians chapter 2 he says, I labor with you in birth pains until Christ be formed in you. Have you ever read that? What's he talking about? He's going through the mechanics necessary as a midwife to tend to the people in church as he develops Christ in them. Our responsibility is to, is to deny ourselves and to restrain and refrain from anything that would undermine the growth of Christ in us. So if I'm ingesting something that's not germane to organic life, I'm undermining the growth of Christ in me, and I can suffer through a spiritual abortion. I can abort the life because I fed in the poison that was not germane to Christ forming in me. So you're restraining yourself and refraining from anything that's going to undermine your transformation. This is all logical. It's the prototypical way that God's God deals with everybody. He sends you through circumstances all the time. If you've been saved any amount of time, you find out this real fast. God sends you through things and exposes you to things to show you yourself. Your reaction to something shows you that's the real you. If somebody can get on your nerves, that means that you have a nerve that somebody can get on. That you've got to get rid of. That's the old life. They just, I just... I punched him in the mouth before I knew what happened. Well, you got to die because that's not Christ. Your thoughts will tell you what's really in you. The devil has a million stimuli coming at you all day. Your responses to those stimuli let you know that's the way you find out what you're really like 
as opposed to what you imagine yourself to be like. See, everybody has a grandiose delusion about themselves embedded in their own minds, and they think they're more advanced and more productive and more grown than they really are. You notice any child, they always think they're older than what they are. You can get a five-year-old child trying to tell you what to do. Why? Because they, in their minds, think that they know more than what they do. That happens in church all day long. People come to church thinking they already know, not knowing their butthole from a hole in the ground, thinking they know already, and the devil's about to bend a crowbar over their heads. If you're trying to tell them, stop, hold up now. The devil is more strategic and more tactical than you. He knows more than you. Don't step out here trying to deal with the devil as an idiot, not prepared, because he will walk up the front of you and down the back of you. He will destroy you. You got to be really in this thing and really know God. So the organic gospel is designed to show you how you progressively go through phases of growth as Christ develops in you. Remember, most church environments are for entertainment and they're about coming to hear motivational speaking and talking about civil rights and what Donald Trump did last week and how black folks are still being uh, discriminated against, all that junk. That's not what the gospel is about. The gospel is designed to prepare you for heaven at the expense of earth. You lose any awareness of this junk down here, you could care less. That's the devil's world and the devil's folks over there. We're preparing to leave here. That's the Titanic. Get on a lifeboat and get out of here because the world is already scheduled to be burned up. So why examine it? Why try to evaluate it? It's a damned planet. Make preparation for departure. The organic gospel will help you. Available on Amazon.com. Also, our own personal website, theorganicgospel.net. Vinny just told me he got another shipment coming in this week. Got another run of the organic gospel, the second edition coming in with a few uh, changes and corrections in it. So it's coming. And the, this new edition will have a little logo with a... a, a a dove on the back to commemorate Maisha. Since Maisha passed away, we want to commemorate her on this book that she helped write. You know, Maisha got about how many books she's written? About two or three books? About four books? So it's, you, it's, you found four? Yeah, so we probably, uh, in a posthumous way, uh, try, to, try to publish all these books. Because Maisha wrote a lot of stuff that she got in a computer somewhere, nobody even knowing <laughs> the stuff was around. But uh, she was a prolific writer, so we're going to uh, try to get those things published and let everybody read what was on her mind. But uh, she's written four books that we got to kind of get out here to show, it, show, show you just what kind of person she really was. So get a copy of the Organic Gospel. It will help you. Everybody reads it. They can understand it. It's not, it's not deep. It's not... Uh, you know, deeply intellectual that nobody can understand it. And it's not full of a bunch of $10 million jawbreaker words that you can't understand because somebody's trying to show off how smart they are. It's just talking to folks about, look, man, we don't have time to fool around. This is real. We got to get out of here. This thing is urgent. And that's what it's all about. Change while you can. Because once you depart this place, you don't, there's no change in there, buddy. Whatever you are when you leave here, you will be that way forever. And I can't afford to, I just can't afford to go to hell. I can't go to hell. I can't see myself in hell. That don't even look right. Get out of here and get out while they're getting this good. The organic gospel. Next, they remember Dumas Tabernacle. You know, all we can do is stand and wait for God to do something about this. It's apparent that there's an, a need for an answer down here, but we can't make it happen. God will have to raise up a different kind of people who are prepared to stand in austere conditions and do the job. Dunamis Tabernacle is not the same old church environment where you sit around in theater-style seating and listen to sermons all day. That garbage, I don't know where that came from. Instead of the Bible, when you see a Stephen or a Philip the Evangelist come into the church, they were equipped, powered up, and sent to, to do the job. Everybody should be an ambassador. Everybody should be a proclaimer of the gospel. There's no such thing as a professional minister. 
The Bible says the fivefold ministry of gifts in Ephesians chapter 4 equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. I don't know what this trash is about coming to church to see a minister. The ministry gifts are gifts given to the ministers. That's why they're called minister gift, ministerial gifts. They are gifts given to the ministers to equip them to do the work of the ministry. We're operating in full tilt, retrograde, underhanded, crazy, retarded garbage. We're coming to church to see a minister like you're coming to see Luther Vandross, R. Kelly. This is crazy. This should be an environment whereby you come to get equipped so you can go and do the work of the ministry because you are a minister. Everybody in God's economy is a minister. Dunamis Tabernacle is designed to equip the ministers to, so they can do the work of the ministry, whatever your ministry is. I don't know what it is, and I don't care. You get equipped, you go do it. It's between you and Jesus now. You'll receive a personal reward from Jesus because of what you did in your mortal body, he's not going to talk to you about anybody else but you. Think about what people are going to go into eternity believing. They're going to believe that church membership, sitting in church, in the choir, and going through the rituals of church will qualify them for heaven. And they're going to hear him say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I have never known you because they didn't do anything personally between them and Jesus to qualify for entry into heaven. It's going to be the most rude awakening ever in the history of existence when you find out that church was detrimental to you. Church is what damned you. It's going to be a rude awakening, but I'm trying to warn folks before it goes down. So Dunamis Tabernacle, not your grandmama's church, designed to equip you so you qualify for entry into eternal rest. It's going to be terrible what people are going to find out when they leave here. If they have not done what God called them to do, and that is the will of God for you. What is the will of God for you? Deuteronomy's Tabernacle, we're designing it to help you find that will, carry it out, and go ahead on and do what you do. Nobody's here to safeguard you and check you and be over you and push you down and dominate you and oppress you. You got to be out here on the front line for Jesus Christ yourself. The Bible calls it a witness. You got to be a witness yourself. Without that happening, I don't know what you are. And I, don't, I don't know what will happen to you. But all I can do is say, God, I told them. My responsibility ends right there. I told you. Dunamis Tabernacle support it. www.omegaministries.org. Click on support, then donate. www.omega ministries.org click on support then donate next thing remember the conference is next year august 2nd through 5th hammock beach resort 28 miles north of daytona beach florida another conference we try to collect all the people together amalgamate them gather them in from around the world one time a year everybody that's under this ministry listening to these messages to come together and just fellowship Get away for a while and rest from all of the maddening crowds and just fellowship with other folks of a like precious faith. Next year, 2018, August 2nd through August 5th, Hammock Beach Resort, 28 miles north of Daytona Beach, Florida, the Soldiers of Light Conference, again, down in Florida. Same thing, same thing we did uh, this year, next year, August 2nd through August 5th. You can fly into Orlando, Daytona Beach or Jacksonville, and all of that will put you right in the zone to get to Hammock Beach Resort, which is actually in Palm Coast, Florida, which is 28 miles north of Daytona Beach, Florida. Come down to the conference. You can make preparations now. You can make travel plans now since you know the dates, August 2nd through the 5th. Everything else germane to the conference will be coming up on the website here lately. Later, we'll have all the registration, all the information to register and get your accommodations taken care of. August 2nd through August 5th, 2018, the Soldiers of Light Conference, Hammock Beach Resort, Daytona, 28 miles north of Daytona Beach, Florida at Palm Coast, Florida. Make all the necessary arrangements now for then. Last thing, 
the Man Up 1000 meeting. We're looking for 1,000 men to pour into Atlanta in December as we see a paradigm shift take place away from church and attend religion and begin to collectively bring men together who have a focused mind to get out of here. Everything we do has one goal in mind, to get out of here. If you're looking for sustainability, if you're looking for this world to last forever, if you see the world is evidently corrupting, evidently people are losing their minds, evidently you see Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah come to life in front of us in real time, that's telling us God is wrapping this up. So we're looking for guys who will say, you know what? I want to be a foundational guy that will stand in the midst of this inferno and be representative of what God called men to be. It's all we're dealing with. We don't need wimps and, and, and little lightweight tenderonies and easily offended guys, proud guys trying to be some religious zealot. Somebody that's a wordologist is quoting the Bible all day. We need a regular, everyday, Joe Blow, two-fisted guy who will say, you know what? Let's just do what we got to do to end this corrupted age. December 29th, 30th, and 31st here in Atlanta, Georgia, looking for these guys to gather together and form up this foundation to do what we've got to do. Make no bones about it. We've got to do what we've got to do now. The time for talking, don't talk to nobody. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Don't nobody want to hear you talking. You talk so much because you're a girl. Shut up and do what you got to do. Shut up and man up. If you ain't going to man up, take your tenderoni, thong-clad butt home and get away from this because you ain't got the balls to be nothing in life and you never have been able to be it. It's time for a guy to get for real and do what you got to do, man. All that talking is because you're scared and you ain't got any guts. And I ain't Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. I ain't no faggot preaching a sissy gospel. This is for a man who wants to be a man and is tired of following girls like you a girl yourself. Step out of this trash, man, and be a man for the first time in your life. Your mama raised you, and now it's time to trade your mama for the living God and his kingdom led by Jesus Christ. We're too soft. We're too prissy. We're too cutie pie in this. You come like when I'm coming out, you're angry. You're mad. You're vicious. That's because you've been always your whole life around in feminine guys. Women have been programmed to complement and supplement a feminine guy. Trying to pet him up and kiss him up. You know how I many women are run out here with their husbands scared of this? Because they don't want that guy to be a man. Because I don't know nothing about complimenting and supplementing a man. So I'm trying to keep this guy castrated and weak. So he'll never be a man. So I can rule the home. Like your mama ruled your daddy. And that's the paradigm you're used to. That's over buddy. It's time for some real guys to step up to the plate. This thing has gone far enough, and it's crazy now. It's insane now to keep this going on. It's time to either put up or shut up, and that's what we've got to do. Man Up 1000, December 29th, 30th, 31st, right here. All the registration information available at www.omegaministry.org right now. You pull down a nine-page instruction package tell you exactly what to do. You won't have to ask one question. Pull it down, follow the instructions. You don't have to talk. Pull down the information, follow the instructions. That's all you got to do. It's as simple as one, two, three. You'd have to try to mess this up. If you're asking a bunch of questions, all the talking is always representative of the fact you're afraid. People are scared. They don't want the world to end. You bring up the end of the world, they get terrified. The world is ending. Whether you're scared or not, you might as well go for broke. Be here. Sign up. Get it done. Also on Facebook, the Man Up America page. You can go there and join that page, tell you everything you need to know. It's time to do something about this. Man, this talking, man. I can't take any more of this talking.
I get up here and talk every week. I talk on Bible study Wednesday night. But all this talking has got to go away. You got to take action now. Be a part of the next thing God is about to do. Sign on, man. Stop being somebody lurking in the shadows. And for the first time in your life, some of you, step up to the plate. And don't be led, but become a leader. You need to be a leader as a man, not be led all the time as some guy's armor bearer or some cup bearer for a little girly man preacher. Be a leader, man, and stop being afraid to be a leader. It's time for a different breed of guy. That's going to wrap up the announcement for today. We're going to get into the word here. Let's take a quick offering real fast. Like I say, everything we can channel to do in this tabernacle, we do. We always kind of circle around $100,000 right now because... We don't have the people with the final push to get over and do this thing. They're afraid. People are terrified. They're trying to find a way to sustain life here and now instead of making preparation to leave here. They know instinctively that this is not the same thing. We don't preach the same message as everybody else. We don't. And I make no apologies for it. I'm preparing some people for departure. The Bible talks about preparation for departure. You have no continuing city here. So that's what it's all about. This is the authentic gospel whereby you change internally, preparing to live again after you leave here. You, can, you know you're not going to make it here. It's impossible. You got to be living to live again. So help support the mission. www.omegaministers.org. Click on support, then donate to contribute to Dunamis Tabernacle. Give here today. If you're giving by live stream, you can go to that website, omegaministers.org. Click on support, then donate. You can... Right now, go over to that page, open another tab, and give, and come right back over here, and the message will be up and running in just a minute. It's time to do something about this situation because it's critical now. These people are losing their minds in real time. We got to do something, and we got to present God with a body that he can use to do something through. Stop being scared. Stop, stop being scared of people. See, people play like they're so brave, but when it gets down to the real thing, they just freeze up. Stop being scared of the devil. Stop being scared of other people. Stop being scared of your boss on the job. Stop being scared of your mama. Stop being scared of your daddy. Stop being scared of your husband, of your wife, of your kids. Folks scared of everybody. What you scared for? Man, it's time to make a move. Do what you got to do. Contribute. OmegaMinister.org. Click on support, then donate. We'll take up a quick offering and get into the word today as we talk about welcome to La La Land. Welcome to La La Land. We're living in La La Land, and we're going to expose La La Land today and show you just how crazy all of this is. Let's take up this quick offering and get right into the word, and we appreciate you giving. All right. We'll get to the word for today. While we're on a fast, I recommend this to you, a little naked juice. I don't know why they call it naked, but, you know, it is what it is. These are smoothies. These are good on a fast, you know, if you want to get a little boost of energy because what's going to happen to you, this is day one of a fast. You're going to feel all right this morning. But around 7, 8 o'clock tonight, you're going to start feeling the effects. Probably by Tuesday, you're going to start going through a withdrawal. Because you, pay, you feed so much slop into yourself, all that sugar and starch and all that junk we eat is going to start taking its toll on you. And that's when you start getting headaches, you start getting knee aches, back aches, because your body's going through food withdrawal. All the stuff we eat is not all nutritious. A lot of this stuff is just full of preservatives. And there's something in the food chain that's not even supposed to be ingested by human beings. You can tell there's something going on. These GMOs and all this stuff they're putting in the foods, these additives, they, they, they store in your body. So your body, a lot of times, can't even break the stuff down to eliminate it. You know, your body has to break down things through digestion for elimination. It's ingestion, digestion, what breaks it down to distribute it through, into your body as nutrition. But what it can't break down is going to store. And you can store up all kinds of crud and debris in your body that has to be somehow gotten rid of. And uh, what happens is when you go on a fast, 
that your body begins to withdraw from the fat that has been taken in all this stuff you shouldn't take in. And your body begins to react to it. But what you want to do is drink a lot of water, a lot of juices to help eliminate the waste. They got different ways of, uh, of uh, eliminating waste. They got different systems. You go to GNC and these other health stores, you'll find a lot of detox systems. You know, a lot of, they got detox teas and that type of thing. So take the detox systems they get out there, take advantage of them, and drink a lot of water because you're trying to flesh your system from all this junk that we're taking in that's not even human in this, in this ability to be consum consumed. It's not made for human consumption. I mean, it is what it is. We live in a world that's fallen, and folks do all kinds of stuff. You know, there's no need for a health system unless you make people sick. You know, they try to make you sick because health care is a moneymaker. You don't believe it? Go, go get a minor surgery done or something like that and see what they charge your, your health plan. You go get a minor surgery, it might be $20,000 for something you thought was nothing. I mean, they bring you an aspirin and it's $500. That's crazy. Because health care is a money maker. You know why they debate health care so much in Washington? Because somebody's getting paid. Whenever you see any kind of an uprising or tumultuous atmosphere around anything in America, somebody's getting paid. If it's a debate going on and they're really struggling and they can't vote on it and there's ups and downs and you're figuring, well, if something is wrong with Obamacare, just go behind closed doors and fix it. But see, they're trying to decide what? Who's getting the money? See, Obamacare paid certain people. Now, Republicans got other friends that want to get paid. So now they're trying to decide where the money's going. That's the holdup now. Whenever you see anything in America that is confused, it makes no sense, talking about a tax cut, it's not about a tax cut, it's who's getting the cut, where's the money going? Everything is about the money, it's the money, it's the money. Everything in America works off of extortion and all kinds of pilfering, larceny, robbery sometimes is not armed. Ask the IRS. <laughs> it ain't, you know, let's, let's look at everything logically for a minute. I tell people, put the brakes on your mind and start thinking. If you pay in the Social Security out of your check every pay period, and your mama and daddy, your grandmama, granddaddy, great-grandmama, and great-daddy paid into it, if all those folk died, then you should inherit it. I mean, y'all paid into the account, right? Yes. My parents and grandparents are dead. All the way back now to my great, 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 great granddaddy paid into this account for them to be paid when they retired. So therefore, since the money is over here that they paid out of their checks, then if I'm the child of all these folks, I should inherit it. Correct? They're going to look at you and say, you are under arrest. <laughs> Why? Why am I under arrest? Why would they arrest me? I exposed them. I exposed the scheme. I exposed the scheme. When you see them go after somebody, they're making that person pay for something they wouldn't play ball about. That's all it is. That's why Lil Wayne went to jail. Lil Wayne didn't go to jail for breaking the law. Lil Wayne went to jail because he wouldn't play ball with the boys. T.I. went to jail because he wouldn't play ball. Don't you know they can dig up dirt on anybody? They can dig up dirt on me, you, and they didn't want to find out some stuff about her. We can find out the dirt on her. Just look that back. You know, look, everybody is being watched down here. That's why they call your TV smart. You know why it's smart? Because they're watching you. You got a smartphone in your pocket. You know why it's smart? Because they're watching you. You don't believe it? Go to work tomorrow. Get in your car, crank it up. You know what your phone going to tell you? 22 miles to your house. And they'll give you the best route to take and you had not even touched the phone. What's that telling you? They know where you are. And if you get out of hand, 
we come to get you. And these drones airborne watching you all. You, this thing here, man, is completely controls society. Those drones are airborne over your house because you might be a troublemaker. They got trigger words that you see on the phone and you come up on the big screen. You ever seen Jason Bourne? That's real. You say certain trigger words over your phone is going to trigger the NSA to let them know that's, that might be potential trouble. I'm on the World Wide Web every Sunday right here. They, they see what I'm doing. They see me. They know me. All the alphabet soup organizations in Washington know, know me. FBI, NSA, TSA, ABC, whatever you want to name, any alphabet soup organization that's germane to security, and homeland security, all that stuff, they can see in this room. They know what I'm saying. They see it on the Internet, and they track you. But guess what? If you're sitting right here, you know what you, what's happening to you? They're tracking you, too, because they know you're here because your phone is right here. That's why people are so scared. But guess what? All of them are going to hell. You just stand here and represent the Lord in the midst of this inferno and could care less about it. Hey, look, you watching me, but God is watching you. And guess who got the most power? You get under a curse if you fear man. Cursed is the man that make his flesh his arm and your heart departs from the Lord. Said Jesus said, listen, don't fear man. Fear him who is able to kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Fear him. All this stuff they're blowing smoke about. These boys think this world matters and they're around trying to be Nazi stormtroopers, SS troopers for the government and these other organizations, not knowing they're damning their souls to hell, trying to enforce what the devil's doing. That's why you got to fast. That's why you got to pray until you lose consciousness of this place and none of this stuff matters anymore. You can always tell somebody that's engaged in it. I say the things I'm saying right now, that tuning fork goes off in their soul. Their soul begins to tribulate because they get scared. That's telling you what about you? I'm attached to the devil's world. Because what's, what's the tuning fork going off in you? What's causing that thing to make feel kind of scary and, you know, kind of like, really? And you start getting antsy inside. You can feel that those bees begin to buzz around inside of you. And you get an upset stomach. You're almost getting a headache sitting here. You know what's doing that to you? What's doing it? Not saved. Not saved. Hmm? What's doing it is the demons that live in you. The demons get scared, and guess who else gets scared? I, I do, because I'm in covenant with them. Everybody in the world has a governing demonic entity assigned to them, and they, when they get upset and get scared, you'll feel it, and you start getting scared. You don't know what's going on. Be tearing out the room, ah, yelling, going up the stairs, running into the parking lot, yelling, because the demon got tribulated. I say, I say stuff on purpose to make that happen. But guess what? The gospel is designed to drive off the demons. You got two choices. You can stay and let it go, or you can go with it. It's got, it's got to go because it can't glory in God's presence. It can't stand in God's presence. It's going to tribulate, and it's going to, it's going to have to leave. And you're going to feel the urge to leave. I need to leave. I need, that's the demon. And you got to tell that demon, yeah, you go ahead and leave. You know what's going to tell you? I'll be waiting on you in the parking lot. <laughs> it ain't going to like leave and just, you know, say, okay, I'll leave, but I'll be right outside. And when you get out there, I'll, I'll pick up what we left off, you know, right outside. You got to understand, this is spirit, this is real. Most things you feel inside, not knowing it's a demon. You just take for granted it's just you feeling some kind of a way. I, I was so nervous. I, got, I went to my boss's office, I, and I got all nervous. My palms started sweating, and that's, just, that's spiritual. This is just the old drunken, stupid bum you're talking to that happened to be your boss, and you nervous around this boob. That don't even make sense. The only time you don't get nervous if you got demons in you, if you're around people that's got the same demons you got. 
See how you and your friends hung out. You were nervous around them when you were doing your dirt because you and them were on the same tribe with the same demons. Y'all were totally compatible. How can two walk together? Lest they be agreed. Yep. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it ain't pretty, but it's real. All right, we're talking about today. Welcome to La La Land. Welcome to La La Land. How crazy this really is down here. And we're going to microscopically take a look at the weirdness of the devil's kingdom and tell you how to extract yourself from it and be prepared for what's about to happen down here. Man, you got no choice now. You got to get ready for what's going, coming down the pike. And you can't afford to be stalled out now. You got to get for real. This is the most serious you've ever been in your life right, right now. You got to be serious about this because, man, it's happening. Whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, the deal is going down. Let's take a look at this thing. Welcome to La La Land. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for the word of God that's able to save our souls. Right now, God, we ask you to take our minds into a place where we can hear you and be submitted to your word and obey your word. It's not about man, it's not about flesh, it's not about church, it's not about religion, it's not about trying to belong to anything. I've got to personally be made ready to, to, to escape this place. The Bible instructs me to pray that I be accounted worthy to escape all the things coming on this earth. God, it's an individual affair now that cannot be faked. We need some people who say, you know what, for God I live and for God I die. I'm through with this make-believe world, and I want to be saved through and through. God, raise up a new kind of people, those who are called by your name, equip them to stand in austere conditions, just like the Hebrew boys stood in that fiery inferno, so that they can tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help them, God, in the midst of this wayward and perverse generation. And we'll give you the praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, let's look at a quick three-minute video that kind of recaps the situation. As uh, this young lady that's, that calls herself the, she calls herself some kind of mom. What you call herself? The activist mom. She's a pretty good lady. You know, she just points out how crazy the world is. And she's got a little three-minute presentation about how weird society has become. And we'll use that to jump off into this dialogue concerning La La Land and how crazy this world is. Let's listen to her and then we'll get right into the word for today. Hi, I'm Elizabeth and I'm the activist mommy. Well, today we're going to be talking about gender insanity. Someone please tell me I'm just dreaming and I simply haven't woken up from a very bad dream. Our youth culture is drowning in an identity crisis. We've got grown men saying they identify as six-year-old girls. Men identifying as aliens and even dragons. Women identifying as cats. <laughs> Moms and daughters transitioning to the opposite sex together. We've got guys going into girls' locker rooms and bathrooms and drag queens are reading stories to children in public libraries, thereby normalizing this behavior of men dressing up in high heels, a wig, a bra, and copious amounts of makeup. Whatever happened to puppet shows and craft day at the library? Why do we need to bring in kitty porn and tampon and Lucy fur to accommodate the 0.001% of the population? Then we have the LGBTQQIAAPP acronym. Yes, that's right. I'll have to read this list since I can't keep up with all of it. It's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, pansexual, that means anything and everything, polysexual, this includes polygamy and orgies, kink is the K. This would include bondage, spanking people, public sex, whatever floats your boat that would come under the label as kink. Then we have the pronoun police, and they wanna make sure that we say, hmm, 
Xi self and air self and verse self and ter self. Oh! Instead of the homophobic pronouns that we used to use. Now, if you don't abide by these gender sensitive policies and pronouns, you're called a racist, misogynistic, homophobic, privileged bigot. March's edition of Time Magazine said this, every different type of identity that exists should be supported. Look, people, this is stupid. This is literally one of the most embarrassing moments in our nation's history. We have become so open-minded that our brains are falling out. Here's the fact. If Bruce Jenner, who now calls himself Caitlyn Jenner, were to commit a crime and leave DNA evidence behind, investigators would send a sample to the lab and determine that the perpetrator was either a male or a female. The evidence would show that she is a what? A biological male. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry if you don't think that's sensitive, but no matter how big Bruce makes his boobs, and how high the heels are he wears, Bruce will always be Bruce. He can't change that. You see, truth and reality and science really mean nothing to the left. People are fighting their true biological identity, and Hollywood and the media are trying to pressure us to celebrate this. No, I'm not going to celebrate your mental disorders. I'm not going to celebrate your sin. I'm not going to celebrate your departure from reality. I'm going to invite you to embrace who you really are, who God made you to be. When you allow for anything other than biological male and biological female, it's banana land. Gender insanity is ruining our nation and our credibility as a people. If you agree, please like my page to become my friend and share this video with the hashtag gender insanity. Thanks and God bless. And then if you say it's crazy, you're marginalized and called a name. Homophobic, uh, transgender phobic. I mean, we are accommodating rampant insanity to the degree that the majority of the people have embraced insanity. And now a normal person is seen as the abnormal part of society. So the world has been turned on its head. So when we're on this roller coaster ride now and everything's going a thousand miles per hour, you've got to come to yourself and say, you know what, hold it. Wait a minute, hold it. Because it's coming at you so much. I mean, it come from your kids, your family members. You got lesbian aunts and homosexual daughters and cousins that are lesbians and all that you're trying to find a way to adapt and trying to understand it and trying to actually deal with people on your job. You can't mention things on your job now because you'll get fired. Somebody felt intimidated because they heard you say something about homosexuality and they called you in the office as if you're abnormal and the homosexual is normal. The government is signing off on homosexuality. Canada will get you now for hate speech. Britain will get you for hate speech because you read Romans chapter 1 which says what it says about homosexuality. Don't even talk about Leviticus. For a man to lie with a man as he lies with a woman is an abomination. You didn't say anything personally. You just read your Bible out loud on the street. And the police walk up to you and arrest you because you intimidated those homosexuals over that couple over there that was standing there holding hands, that man, those two men. They felt threatened by you. And you'll be a, a, a arrested for a terroristic act because you read Leviticus or Romans chapter 1. You see, we're in the midst of a world being given over to madness. I'm going to show you why that's happening in just a minute. So you got to really back out of this for real. Stabilize under the yoke of God. You got to get under God and get your mind stabilized. Come to yourself and say, hold it, wait a minute. 
let's slow down a little bit. Let me take some time, go back, not read my Bible, but systematically study my Bible. Let me fast. Let me get along with God and pray to the living God and stabilize my inner man. Because when you're on a tumultuous roller coaster ride, things will be coming at you so fast you'll be reacting to them, but it won't be God reacting to be you and your flesh. So you got to deaden that flesh. You got to take the time to deaden that flesh in, a, in a, a very tumultuous environment full of vitriol and hatred for everybody. Anybody that won't play ball with them, they'll mark you and hate you. So you got to be, it's, it's, it's not used to, for a, hum, a human being that's not easy, easily able to get used to hatred. Did you know that? When somebody really hates your guts and despises you, it does something to you because you can feel the death coming at you. The hatred comes across as death. It's murder in their hearts. And it's not easy to adapt to somebody hating you, especially your relatives. You go to the family reunion and everybody really hates you. And they're trying to cloak it in, hey, Janine, had, girl, we had, I haven't seen you for years. How you doing? And you know, in their heart, they, can, they despise you. See, a human heart, a human spirit can pick up all this stuff about people. When they really hate you, when they're smiling in your face. And you know, deep down inside, I can't stand you. I'll kill you if I had that. I wish I'd take, I'll take that butcher knife when you turn around and slam it in your skull. That's what they really feel. But they're trying to smile in your face and make you believe they're all right with you. That's a wicked and perverse generation. It's a world gone mad. I'm going to dissect now microscopically why the world has gone mad, what's doing it. Now, what I'm going to tell you is going to seem so far-fetched that that can't be it. The natural inclination of most people when I say what I'm about to say is, out of a million things, the one thing he said can't be it. That's, can't be, that's not it. I know that's not right. You'll leave here totally persuaded and knowing I'm wrong. I've missed it by a million miles. The service was pretty good. I enjoyed the singing. But when he said that, that can't be it. No way, no how, I'm not believing it. It can't be something that crazy that's causing all of this. And I'm telling you, at the root of all of it, is what I'm going to tell you today. As we're talking about welcome to La La Land. It's a make-believe crazy world out here. The other day, I think Friday, they had a radio podcast, and a young lady came on there, you know, married to Dwayne, you know, Dwayne Wade, and, and it was his wife's name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle Union. She came on there, and they interviewed her, and she was giving a discourse about sexual life with Dwayne Wade. Pub see, people publicly talk about their sex life with their husbands. Right there you know it's something wrong. Something's mentally wrong with this girl and it's something off. But you know, if you trace back where she comes from, she was raped when she was like 19. The girl is hurt, beat up inside, the devil is taking a crowbar and beat her insides out. And so it leaves you detached from reality. That's what the devil does. He tries to traumatize you, and when he traumatizes you, what happens is when you go through trauma, your mind will escape the trauma. See, that's how the government creates Manchurian candidates to kill people, as assassins. I mean, you, you look at movies like Jason Bourne and the Bourne uh, legacy and all of that. This stuff is real. Notice how they got Drake, Jason Bourne to shoot a man at point blank range, just kill him cold-bloodedly, that's trauma-based mind control. They get you to go through an experience that will trauma bait, trauma, traumatize you, and they'll make your personality splinter into multiple personalities that the program is called alters. The word alter is short for an alter ego. They create compartmentalized personalities so you can be shifted into another personality. That's why Beyonce would walk on stage, but she has, to, she has to go through a transformational process until the spirit of Sasha Fierce comes on her. Then she'll do anything on the stage at that point. 
You know, she'll get out of the, she'll get out of cars and no underwear on and show you her vagina. Just that's because it's an altar manifest, manifesting itself. You saw her traumatized at a basketball game when she said they just swing. Her mind was trying to collect itself because she had been traumatized. That guy might be beating her, pumping her full of drugs. And one of the best ways to traumatize somebody is through severe perverted sex. That'll traumatize you. See, that's why they try to rape kids, molest them at a young age, traumatize them. All of this is designed to create altars in you. The psychological term for it is schizophrenia. Multiple personalities. MPD, multiple personality disorder. The most famous person that had these personality uh, character traits was Sybil. You remember the movie Sybil? I think she had like 90 personalities. See, these are altars, short for alter egos. And when faced with any trauma, what happens? Before you deal with the trauma, what do you do? You escape to another personality. You ever dealt with a person and you're looking at them and you're trying to figure out, that fool crazy. You're talking to them and you can see them shift into this other thing and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Your, your mama could have done that to you. She'd be all right one minute and all of a sudden she just go off. And you're thinking, mama, uh, <laughs> look, you don't be telling I'll kill you. But mama, come. Ma <laughs> you look at your mom, this fool is crazy. My mama crazy. That's, that's really what it was. But you don't know what happened to your mama. You don't know if your mama was raped. You don't know if your mama's dad had molested her. You don't know if her uncle came into her room every night when she was eight years old and molested her. That's why we can't judge people like a book looking at the cover. You don't know the inner workings of what made them them. It's not just crazy for no reason. There's a, a history associated to everybody's soul. That's why you need God and the Holy Ghost to do this. Because, see, the Holy Ghost can go back and fix all this stuff. I'm not going to even try to take on the effort of trying to fix a human being because a human being has too many personality traits, too many idiosyncrasies that you can't fix. That's why preaching at them won't work because they got a scattered, fragmented, fractured soul. This is by the, why the Bible says in Psalm 23, Jesus Christ restoreth my soul. My soul has been fragmented. I got this hurt and pain and dysfunctionalities in me that came from trauma-based occurrences. You got to know that about people before you take this on. See, you can't come in here with a, 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 just a, a heavy hand and a sword cutting people up. I say hard stuff. But it's not designed to destroy you. It's designed to bring you into reality. Before you can fix somebody... They've got to first come to reality because the trauma-based soul escapes into what? Fantasy. And that's why we have a world that depicts la-la land. These are all people with scattered souls and having all these alter egos in them that are dysfunctional inside and they're escaping their minds to avoid anything that will hurt them. They are trying to avoid being hurt. Avoid anything that reminds them of what they've been through. If you meet a woman that has been beat by guys, she'll be guarded around you because that's the program running. You just say, hey, look, hey, what you grabbing me for? What you grabbing me? I'll kill you. I can't start shooting up the house. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was just going to tell you the rice was burning. The rice is burning. No, you put your hands on me, though. I just touched your shoulder. What? But see, they've been traumatized. And see, what happens is when that program runs, anything that reminds you of what you've been through, which is a trigger, they can trigger it. When they deal with monarch mind control victims, they have trigger words. They can call you on the phone and say one word because they associate that trigger word with the trauma. You see what I'm saying? So they'll trigger the altar by calling you and saying, Rosebud. And you go get a high-powered rifle, aim at the skull of the victim, and blow their brains out. A trigger word. They got a lot of ways of doing it. 
If you look at the public, Beyonce is a trauma-based mind control victim. Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, Kanye West, Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, all the rappers. That girl who plays on uh, Empire, what's her name? Taraji P. Henson. The girl that plays on, what's the other one? Scandal. All these folk trauma-based mind control victims. The devil can't use you until he creates an altar in you because you won't do this stuff in your right mind. Halle Berry is a trauma-based mind control victim. She was beat and just treated like a dog her whole life. So she'll do anything seeking acceptance because she's trying to avoid rejection. This is how you control folks. The most rejected, disenfranchised people who escape into alter egos on this planet are preachers. That's when you see them shifting to that, hand up, hand up, yeah. well, Lord, I'll help me, Lord, hallelujah. That's an alter ego. Don't nobody talk like that. That guy's, an, that guy's crazy. And you sit there entertained by this idiot because you use trauma-based victims for entertainment. Hugh Hefner became a millionaire using trauma-based victims to make his empire work. You don't even bring it up in church. You don't even discuss it. T.D. Jakes has built an empire off of trauma-based victims. That's why he was able to pimp Eddie Long. Eddie Long was his boy. You find the videos with Eddie Long wiping T.D. Jakes' brow as T.D. Jakes is preaching, going get a handkerchief and just patting his head, wiping his head off, his bald head off for him. Why? Because Jakes is able to pick out the effeminized guys that have been sodomized because he's a sodomizer. That's why your boy can come out there as Medea and fit right into the groove with Jake's hand and glove. Because Tyler Perry is a trauma-based mind control victim. That's the people you exploit. What's my job, really? What to ask Jesus? Jesus come to them and have a problem. What was the first thing he said? Would thou be made whole? Because he knows they're scattered. He knows their minds have been traumatized. He didn't just deal with healing people physically and trying to deal with their problems. He was there to make you whole. Like Humpty Dumpty trying to put those scattered pieces back together again. When you see people acting crazy, that's it. It's got a root to it. You got to step back and you got to pray to God for these people because that's way past what a human can do about it. A psychologist and psychiatrist cannot help these people because it's spiritual. Because reigning over every alter ego, there is an assigned demon that governs that altar. When Beyonce calls up Sasha Fierce, she's calling up the demon spirit that governs Sasha Fierce. That's why she could do anything imaginable as Sasha Fierce. And she'll tell you when I came out of it, I can't believe I did those things. She done said that herself. Can't nobody twerk like that and they bump and get on the floor and hunch like a dog. You ever seen these little girls twerking? They twerking until that thing comes on them. And then they act just like a dog. They're taking on a dog spirit. Gabrielle Union says to this guy interviewing her, the guy said, what was the first time you licked a butt? She says, part of a woman's liberation, we should be able to do all these things. You know, yeah, I do it. And begin to talk casually about licking somebody behind. Now, that's telling you she can't be in her right mind. You wouldn't even let anybody know you did that in a public spectrum. But Nicki Minaj sings about it. 50 Cent accusing Bill Gay Fox of doing that. I'm telling you public stuff. So I ain't telling you no, I ain't telling you no stories out of school because this, all this stuff out there in the public arena. Am I making it up? And that's what's lurking behind the scenes. When you're seeing all this crazy out here, behind closed doors, that's what these folk are doing. 
And what's it doing? I'm going to show you what it's doing. Look, open your Bible to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I wish it was pretty. I wish it was nice. I wish I could talk about, I don't know, you know, happy-go-lucky type stuff and everything was beautiful. But, buddy, I don't want to stand in the middle of a thunderstorm with it pouring down rain with no umbrella talking about I'm not wet. Ain't that kind of crazy? We're in the middle of hell pretending we're in heaven. That's crazy. We got to come to terms with what we really got in front of us, no matter how distasteful it is, and we got to deal with it. I would love to do other stuff, man. I love to talk about stuff that was lovely. I wish it was my best life now, like Joel Osteen said. I wish every day was really Friday. I really do. But guess what? It ain't. If you're from New York, it is not. <laughs> we got to, you know, some y'all in the world, you was gambling when you was in the world. You don't act like you was always saved. When that dealer dealed those cards to you playing poker, when you got those cards in front of you and unfold them, fanned them out, you know what you had to do? I got to play the hand I've been dealt. I didn't ask for this to be like this, but God forewarned us what is going to be like this. We got to play the hand we've been dealt. We don't have, we don't have the, the luxury of trying to avoid anything. We're going to have to live through this one. Romans chapter 1, take a look at verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God, did you not know that God has wrath, that God can destroy some stuff? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth. That's better stated, they hold back the truth in unrighteousness. They hold back the truth because of their unrighteousness. So when you see somebody unwilling to tell you the truth, you can also know what about them? They're unrighteous. They got something they're hiding. So you don't expose what you are. You don't do it. You hide things about life based on what you have in yourself. You'll never confront yourself. If I got a sin in me, I won't confront it. I won't do it because I'll be undermining Satan's kingdom. Satan can't cast out Satan. Satan does not go to war against Satan. So if I got some, some of Satan's parameters in me, I will not attack that thing which is like the devil in me. So they hold back the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest. It's shown to them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things that define God can plainly be seen from creation. The stars tell a story. The heavens tell a story. The landscape on earth tells a story. The sea tells a story. The elements of the world tell you about God, if you know how to interpret what they're saying to you. So the things of God that are invisible are exposed by creation of the world, and they're clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Meaning what? The people who hold back the truth in unrighteousness are without excuse because God has revealed himself to them. So they can't make excuses because they're doing their dastardly deeds on purpose. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, empty. The word there really in the Greek is idolatrous. They became idolatrous in their imaginations. Look what happened. Where did it happen? In the mind. In their imaginations. What happens when you run from the real and true God? You make up a God. And pretend that that is God. You know people tell them make a Jesus. That conforms to themselves. 
They don't read the Bible and let God form up Christ in them and worship the true and living God in spirit and in truth. When you run from God and don't deal with truth, you, don't, you can't afford to say you don't believe in Jesus and there is no Jesus. What you do is you refabricate another Jesus that's going to be compatible to yourself. Where is that found at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4? It says there's another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. See, if I got some kind of a perverted ulterior motive when I'm preaching or bringing the gospel to bear on people, I must twist it to align itself with what I'm after. That's what Creflo Dollar did. He wanted money. You see his last name is Dollar? It should be Creflo, give me a dollar. He took the scripture and twisted it because he wanted money. That's, that, so he preaches what? Another Jesus. A prosperity Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. Jesus, I don't even have a place to lay my head. This thing ain't about getting money. It's about doing the will of God. That's the focal point. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You got to know what you're sitting in front of. Now, if I say something about Creflo Dollar, and inside of you say, oh, you shouldn't mention his name. And you, you, you don't judge God's prophet. You got the devil in you. The devil that came from him is now embedded in you. Because you received the devil out of his mouth. You took heed to his words. He imparted the devil in him into you. And now you're a part of the body, not of Christ, but the body of Creflo Dollar. You got another Jesus. You got another spirit. You listen to another gospel. And now you have the spirit of Antichrist. So if anybody comes and brings Christ to you, you'll push Christ off of you in favor of Creflo Dollar. And they'll hide behind, touch not mine anointed. And do his prophets no harm. Notice how people are so afraid to put their mouth on anything. You know what they tell you? You can't judge. You can't judge. You can't judge. <laughs> you got to read the whole Bible. He that is spiritual judges all things. And he himself is judge of no man. You can't warn people by trying to go around who's doing the damage. That's like me telling you, there's a man looking for you. He got a rifle outside. He's going to kill you. He got it under this, over, under, under this overcoat. He got a, he got a gun. He told me he's going to blow your brains out. You say, well, who is it? I'm not going to tell you who that is. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> a guy going to do you in, I know who it is. Yet I won't warn you. I call the police. There's a man going to kill 10 people tonight. Well, who is it? Where does he live? I know where he lives. I know his name. He's over. He's a house, in the house right now. I'm looking at him out my window. Well, who is it? Where is it? I don't want to judge him. How are you going to avoid the calamity and the damage when nobody tells you where the poison is? This is crazy. But guess what happened? The sorcerers and the warlocks and the witchcraft workers used the spell, divined it on your mind, and now they're protecting themselves by the spell they cast on you. So if I come and just tell you the unadulterated truth with no holes barred, I'm the devil. You've been bewitched. That's why the apostle falls into Galatians in chapter 3 and says, Oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? They in church. You listen to these nutcases, you get a spell cast on you, they tell you they're a prophet, and you think somebody's touching God's anointed. We are brought, painting this broad brush making everybody saved, and these folk came from the devil. That's why we need some folk with some backbone now. Some true grit, like John Wayne, you remember the movie True Grit? <laughs> you need somebody with some guts again. And stop being so silly and gullible and religious and call a spade a spade. We got to get back to some old folk from the hood. We need a hood rat that's been sanctified. I need a sanctified hood rat. You know, I just call them, you know, booty boy, butthead. You know, you know all them names y'all gave them, you know. Jack man. 
Stank man, slick Rick, patty boy, slop man, all that stuff y'all called them. You know what you all them names y'all called them for. We need those people, just sanctify them and keep your street sense. But you know what happened? We went to school and got so intellectual that we became, we became educated fools. And now the slick con artists can come in talking slick. Talking about I love how they talk. They have such an, an expansive vocabulary. They're such an articulate person. And their oratory was just so dramatic. It gave me chills. And they, them chills going to wear off because hell ain't cold. They gave you chills, but we're going to get rid of those chills in just a minute because we're going to burn those chills off of you. You can't afford to be playing around with your eternal life. You can't afford to play with the devil because the devil comes for three reasons. To steal, to kill, and destroy you. He's hiding in plain sight. These folk you see on TBN, 90% of them are false prophets leading you to hell. That's why you got to get your Bible, turn that plate over, and get back in that word for yourself. I don't tell you to follow me. You got a Bible. You got a concordance. You got a dictionary. You got a thesaurus. You got all these study aids. And you sit there and let some nut drag you to hell. You do whatever you get because you submitted to that. Because you wouldn't study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God for yourself. I can't afford to put my eternal destiny into the hands of another person. We're talking about forever now. I'm not going to be, a, be a, accountable to you and dependent on you when this is the rest of my existence and I'm dependent on you. No, man. I got to make my calling and my election sure. I got to work out my salvation for myself with fear and trembling. I got to remain faithful for me. Because I got to make it in on my own merit, attached to Jesus Christ personally, and be accountable to him. You better leave all these folk alone. You bathe yourself in too much preaching and too much teaching, you're going to find yourself in a whirlwind. You better get into your Bible for you and let God send you somebody if he wants to compliment what he's showing you and supplement it with teaching. Let God lead you and guide you into all truth. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. He will lead and guide you into all truth. Don't think everything preaching came from God because it didn't. This thing is getting down to the, the end climax, climax of the ages and you can't afford to be deceived now. First thing Jesus said in Matthew 24 when they asked him about the end of the age, first thing out of his mouth, take heed that no man deceive you because deception will be running rapid as we get closer to the end. You can't afford to be deceived. Look at this. They didn't know God. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Now, can you imagine what it's like to have a darkened heart? What does that mean? You darken a room and all the light goes out. And you know what you can't do in a dark room? I can't see. With a darkened heart, you can't see. So what do people with darkened hearts do? Logically, if you can't see, what do you do? You know what you do? You go with the herd. I don't know what's true or what's right and wrong. So what do I use to govern my choices? Wherever the majority goes, that must be right. And I'm right down at the mega fist, listen to a drag queen talk to me. Listen to a witch like Oprah instruct me. A witch telling me how to live. Because I can't see. If my gospel, if the gospel is hidden, it's hidden to who? Them that are lost. In whom? The God of this world has blinded what? The mind. My mind is blind. I can't discern what's good and evil. The Bible says a mature person has their senses exercised to discern good and evil. See, a real saint, you can pick up when somebody got 90% truth, but you can pick up that 10% of living, that 10% of rat poison, you can pick it out. Because you have what? 
your senses exercised to know that was, that was good for the first 40 minutes. But when he said that right there, some inside of me just, Holy Ghost going to kick in. He going to let you know. Uh-uh. He'll back you off of that because that wasn't right. If you don't have that ability within yourself, you better seek God until you get it. And the only way you can do it is you stay in that word and you bathe your soul in that word. Because the devil going to always do what? He's going to pervert that word somewhere. He's going to get you, man, all the way into the wheelhouse. The anointing is high, you think. Everybody jumping and shouting. Everybody just, this is, thank you, Jesus. They're just shouting and dancing. and Everybody just happy. And you're the only one sitting there. I don't know. Some ain't right. Some just, yeah. your husband just, why don't you get up, girl? Just the Lord. No, Harry. No, Harry. Some just ain't right. That's what you want. Because, man, you can't afford to be deceived now. You got to be, you'd be better off being overly cautious than you would be just gullible and running behind everything. See, I'm not trying to get you to believe what I believe or follow me. I'm telling, for, I'm telling you to go and make your calling and election sure. You do what you have to do to get in. You can't say anything about what I'm saying. I'm preaching an infallible message. Know what it is? You are responsible for you. How can you find blame with me when I'm telling you it's all on you? What? My hands are behind my back. My hands are tied. You have got to be responsible for you in this. You go dependent on somebody else, one thing you're going to find about a human, a human is going to get tired. A human get get tired of talking to you. A human can't be reached. A human might have just died last night. <laughs> Cursed is the man that makes flesh his arm. You can't afford to depend on flesh. Talking about my husband is everything to me. You know, he had a heart attack last night. He's dead. He was everything to you, but he's dead. You can't afford, man, to be trusted in flesh because flesh can leave here. You've got to know God for real this time. Look what he says here. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to what's the first give up? Uncleanness. Uncleanness. This is why these folk are talking about oral anal sex. They've been given up to uncleanness. Your environment will be unclean. Your home will be unclean. You won't even take a bath. Uncleanness is the first give up. Everything about you will be unclean. Your thoughts will be unclean. Your emotions will be unclean. Your appetites will be unclean. A give up of God, the first one is uncleanness because they became idolatrous and they would not submit to the living God. He gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Can't you see what's happening? Dishonor your own body with somebody else. When you are falling into depravity and God has given you up to the forces of Satan, you can always track it because of how you treat yourself. No self-respect. No dignity. You can be treated any kind of a way by anybody because you're detached from God. I was at a school this past week. And it was a little young girl working there. And the, she's part of the cafeteria staff. And it was something funny about her. Because anytime I would walk past her. Like, you know, walking from one place to the other. She would always look at me real fast. Look away. And she'd look in your eye and look away. I was about to say, hey, how you doing? She I'm thinking, what? It, I mean, it was like, like somebody that was crazy. You know somebody who could never make eye contact with you looking at it. I'm thinking, this is weird. So the other day, I was, I was around her, and she was talking about something. She had to move or something that she couldn't move. I said, oh, I get it for you. Don't worry about it. I got it. And I moved it forward, whatever. She said, thank you. 
But that was like it broke the ice or something. Like she was all right to talk after that. And here's the first thing she said to me, really, since I had seen her. She walked up to me and said, I'm going to the Buddha Club tonight. <laughs> now, who in their right mind? Now, think about what I'm saying. Who in their right mind don't know nobody, don't know this person? And the first thing you say to them is, I'm going to the Booty Club tonight. You're like, what, what am I supposed to say now? <laughs> so I said, you know what I said? I said, well, why are you going there? She said, my friends are strippers, and they get me in free. I get drinks, and I know all the clientele there. So, you know, I just hang out there because I like, you know, the atmosphere. And I get stuff, you know, my friend, all my girlfriends strippers. Then she said, and they drive Mercedes Benzes and Jaguars and BMWs. They make big money. I say, but you don't even look like you fit in there. You don't, she was a cute little girl. Nice figure. I said, you don't even look like, you like a quality girl. You're like, you know, a, a nice girl. You don't need to be in that kind of environment. That's a nasty old state place for old girls that ain't got no sense and don't have nothing else in life. Don't go hanging out there. She said, shoo. You don't understand. Then she said this. I already auditioned. You know what I'm lacking? It costs 250 to get that license. Because your know, strippers in Atlanta got to have a license. You know that? You can't just go and strip. You got to be licensed to strip. I guess it's like a driver's license or something, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're driving all that naked behind, so I guess you got to have a license to do it. She said, that, you know, the Atlanta license is 250 I said, what club you hanging out at? She's in Magic City. You know, Magic City, the, the high line strip joint in Atlanta. Everybody go there. You know, that's where they hang out. But I said, listen, don't do that. I was trying to talk out of it. She said, you know, you just don't know, man. There's a lot of money in there. I said, listen. This is what I told her. I said, listen. You know, a lot of other stuff go with that strip in there. So them girls don't just strip. They got to be servicing them client behind the scene. It's really prostitution. She said, you know what she told me? Man, all cards on the table. I know what I'm getting into. But see, all that, not looking at you and all that stuff she was doing. Now, here's what she really said to me. She didn't say, I'm going to the booty club. Now, that's what, that's what you might have heard her say physically. That's what she really said. You want some of this? <laughs> see, because if you tell somebody I'm going to the booty club, you already told them everything about you. Then she's telling you, I, I play for money. She telling me, uh, if I said, look, well, I, I got a couple, two, I got $200 on me right now. Uh, they're going to run her to the Ramada Inn right down the street. You know what she was saying? Okay. Because okay. she was letting me know, I'm ready to go, man. I'm armed and extremely dangerous, and I'll throw this thing on you heavy, man. I'm a shade dancer, too. You know I can handle that thing, man. I can twerk you into a coma, boy. But you know what we got out there? We got a world full of brazen hussies. That's the way it is. They're walking around like bulls in a china shop. But see, when you got these women out there as bulls in a china shop, you got the female version of a bull, which is a heifer. You know what you call that girl who took your boyfriend? <laughs> Back in the day, you know what I'm saying? You ain't said no brazen. You had some cussing in front of him. He said, that heifer. See, that what you got in the china shop. A brazen heifer. The Bible calls it a dromedary, sniffing at the wind. You know what a dromedary is? It's a camel. What you, looking, what you sniffing for? Victims. She trying to find out where. What a lust deal. What are you? That your wife? Man, you need to dump her. You come right there, come to you in the club. Come, you could be at the mall. He said, hey, man. Well, I was looking at you. I like them big men. Why be standing right there? I like them big boys. I break a big joke and die. <laughs> your wife be looking at her like, you brazen? You know, but. <laughs> See, back in the day, you might have took your shoes. See, a black woman take her shoes off. <laughs> we take them shoes off, Jack. And see, when they get ready to fight, when black women get ready to fight, they don't, they put their hand on it, they put one foot back 
and see when they put it on the hip, they don't put it in the form of like a cup. They have to arch it in reverse. It'd be like this. <laughs> when you see the right, when they when the hand being reversed, when they reverse that hand and that foot go back like the ran, and they take them stilettos off, run. <laughs> you better run. Cause they getting ready to duke you up. It's a whole lot of stuff you just look at, okay. The foot is back. Okay, that's step one. Okay. The hand is cooked to the reverse. She took her shoes off. I'm going to go. Because they're going to beat your butt. But see, them, they in your face now, man. They don't care if your wife is standing there. They don't care. They've been pushed out of the way. Look out the way, girl. Get out of the way. You here by yourself or you with her? That's why you got to be what? Saved. Sanctified and filled. Because you know you can revert back to how you used to be. And before you know it, somebody laying in a pool of blood. Because you reverted back to where you came from. They mistook kindness for weakness and you just one off because the flesh wasn't totally dead. But we're in an environment now, y'all, that is so far gone that anything is possible. So you got to be totally delivered and let God sanctify you, the Bible says, holy. You got to present your body to God to be sanctified. Because I'm telling you, as a guy, these women are playing for keeps. They don't care. They don't, they don't care what age they are or whatever. When desperation sets in, they're looking for somebody to put that fire up between their legs. They might do anything. Your neighbor, the person living down the street, your relatives, you think your cousin came to stay with you? It's... it's they might be somebody crazy. You got to be aware of your environment now because we're living in la-la land. This is a different type of environment. They bathe their souls in lust. The music and the movies are full of perversion and sexual deviance. Everything is bathing itself in sexual perversion. So therefore, for you to be able to stand in this, you need all of God to fill you. This is real, folks. This is a real deal this time, and it's not something to play with. Look what he says. They dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. They serve the creature more than the creator. That's a comparative statement. The creature is elevated above the creator. So everything about the human race is elevated. They want to see people. They listen to people. And they bypass what God says. And they favor what a person says over God. So Steve Harvey can tell you how to be a woman, not God. Oprah can instruct you, not God. Philosophers, psychologists can tell you about life, not God. You want a psych psychological evaluation? Read Proverbs. It'll get you straight. That boob that's got that psychology degree is going to drive you crazy. Because he doesn't know. He's limited. God made a mind. God can fix a mind. So you see now. If you worship the creature above the creator, you're going to lose your mind. You'll lose your mind. You cannot afford to give yourself over to anything down here as being the end all be all of your life. Look at this. They change the truth of God into a line. Worship the creature over the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, because they did this, it says for this cause, God gave them up unto what? Vile affections. That word for affections is desires, feelings, emotions. Contaminated, vile, perverse affections. For even, even, that's stress right there now. Even, it's almost like a desperate cry. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. They took the natural use. 
and change it into that which is against nature. The natural use. He's talking about sexual copulation. He's talking about having sex. The natural use has been perverted into that which is against nature. And likewise, now he says, like the women have done, the men leaving the natural use. Now look, he said two times natural use. The women, they took the natural use, they changed it. There's a change that took place now. They did change the natural use. The natural use. The creases in the Greek, which is the vag vaginal cavity. They took the vaginal cavity and used it for some unnatural use. They changed it. And then the men left the vaginal cavity the natural use. You see what happened? Something has happened sexually to warp everybody's mind. And as, the, as you step away from God and begin to leave him, sexual deviance comes into you. And you become more deviant with every step you take. So that perversion filth, and gutter rot normalizes in you. That's what's happening to people. They're becoming more and more deviant to the degree that Gabrielle Union can come into public and talk about oral, anal sex and not flinch. You got women with no discretion, no virtue, no honor, no dignity, and they're proud of it. Their claim to fame is their depravity. Porno stars are proud of being known as deep throat artists, able to perform oral sex at a high level. They have conventions featuring these women that are freaks and perverts. They used to sing about them in songs when Rick James sang about the super freak. He says, not the kind of girl that you take home to your mother. She's freaky in the back of a limousine. But now Beyonce talks about being a freak in the back of a limousine on her knees with, with J.D. spewing semen all over her dress like Monica Lewinsky. She said, I've been Monica Lewinsky in the back of the limousine. And now she's a star and has global preeminence, seen as some kind of a virtuous woman. And Michelle Obama says every daughter, every mother should want her daughter to be like Beyonce. You just curse your two daughters. This is gutter rot and filth at its lowest level. And see, the mind now can endure sound doctrine. Folk would do anything but stay under sound doctrine long enough to get their minds straight. They have a very, very shallow attention span. You know that they're saying they have to do things in school, even make TV commercials to accommodate the fact that people have low attention span, they can't pay attention for a long period of time. They're changing how they present information in textbooks in school because the kids don't have an attention span. They got to set mathematical problems to beats now to get it into the kids' souls because they're used to the hip hop and the beats. They're dumbing down the people. They're dumbing them down. So you see now, you can see this happening to society in real time. The natural use of the woman has been changed and the men left the women and burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense or that repayment of their what? So homosexuality is error. You're not born like that. It's not genetic. It's an error according to the scriptures. So you got to understand this about life. If somebody tells you they don't believe the Bible, any hope of their salvation just ended. When they tell you it was written by man or the white man wrote it to control black people, any hope of their salvation was just, just eliminated. They're damned. If you disregard this Bible, you are damned. That's it. We don't have anything else to offer them. When your reference point is, it is written, and they tell you what is written is not valid, they're damned. They're a damned soul. You can't do one thing to save them. Not one thing. If you speak not according to the 
law and the prophets let you be accursed. That Bible is the gateway into knowing God. It has to be dipped in the spirit and revelated. That's how you get to know God. When somebody challenges the Bible, they are damned. That's just the way it is. No discussion, no arguments, no debates. You damn your soul when you denigrate that Bible. When you tell you, when they say that Bible's not authentic, I don't believe it, it's, it's for the white man, you, damn, you damned your soul, bro. You're a damned soul and you're irretrievable. If somebody died like that, if your brother died like that, he's in hell tonight. If your grandmama died gripping the crucifix and praying to Mary, she's in hell tonight because no idolater took her in her end. It don't change for nobody. You can hope all you want. You can wish all you want. He says, I am not going to deny my father. I exalt my word higher than my name. You, you, we're not here to preach wishful thinking. I'm not here to wish everybody was saved because the Bible says there's more, more of a chance you're damned than saved. It's a broad way that leads to damnation. And many there be that go in therein. And narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. God tells you that about the process from Jump Street. Your brother died after robbing a liquor store and didn't repent. He's in hell tonight. Everybody who did not leave this planet repented and submitted to Jesus Christ is burning tonight. They're in hell tonight. That's why you can't afford to fool around with this. I'm not here to tell stories and fables. It's real. You got to make this thing real. You got to tell people the reality of salvation and what it entails to be saved. You can't distort it or change it in any way. If you do, you'll damn yourself. I'm not going to damn myself trying to modify the Bible to accommodate anybody. I tell my kids, you leave her unsaved, you're damned to hell. I make no apologies for it. I speak according to the law and the prophets. I speak according to the word of God. I speak according to the promises of Jesus. Every promise of Jesus is not positive. He promised you damnation if you leave here unsaved. So they left these women burned in lust amongst themselves and re received the AIDS, the HIV, the gonorrhea, the syphilis, the chlamydia, the HPVs that was due them. That's a just recompense for their error, the Bible says. And even if they did not, now here we, here's where we are right now. This is current events now in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. Remember the other two times, uncleanness and vile affections, he gave them up. But this time he does what? Letting you know what? They are irretrievable. They can't be, they're damned. You're going to meet people from here on out that are damned and you can't save them. You can pray. You can fast. You can do everything you can to bombard heaven. You can talk to them by day and by night. But they've been given over to damnation. And God won't even save them. You can't make God save them. They're damned. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They don't want to know anything about God. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So here's a list of how they'll be. So you can look at them and tell if they're reprobate. Look at this. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. Murder, debate. All oh, they do is debate all day. They, don't, they just debate and argue all day long. Deceit. They tell a bunch of lies and they deceive themselves. Malignity. You know what a malignant tumor is? It's a rotten tumor that's just full of all kinds of abscesses and rottenness. It's malignant. Whisperers. Better state it slanderous. See, the devil was a whisperer. They go behind your back whispering and slandering you. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, 
proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, they break agreements. They promised you something. They said, I do at the altar and divorce you three months later. They made a promise. They broke it the next day. Covenant breakers. Without what? Natural affections, natural desires. Implacable, meaning everywhere they go, they stir up mess and can't have any peace around them. You have a peaceful environment until they come around because they're implacable. That's a sign of reprobation. Unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of what? Death. Not only do they do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. So the rappers and all the people that are bathed in anarchy and craziness and insanity, they like those people. They exalt those people. We're watching wholesale depravity take hold of a society. Look at little Tony Braxton. She just, you saw her just degrade herself till she got with Birdman. And you walking around in a restaurant with Birdman holding his hand, coming in to get a table. Birdman. Face all covered in tattoos, neck covered in tattoos, arms covered in tattoos. Birdman. You, 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 this is your man, Birdman. And Tony Braxton in the day was beautiful, beautiful girl. How do you degrade on the inside until you get down to Birdman? Who would walk around with a guy 50 years old named Birdman? How do you introduce him in a crowd? This is bird man. Oh, you were the guy that was kissing Lil Wayne in the mouth, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. That's your man. This man that you with was kissing Lil Wayne in the mouth. You with him? See, they don't never want you to bring up stuff that's really real, see. But what we're seeing is even these pretty girls being degraded and debased down to nothing. They let the gum on the bottom of people's shoes, now they just trashed out holes, holes, just hold out. Low level scum. And God is saying, I'm trying to bring you up. I'm trying to get you delivered and free your mind from being nothing to yourself. See, when the program running in you makes you, you nothing to you, that's rock bottom. And see, they're always trying to find out and check out where you coming from. That's why a little girl come to me talking about I'm going to the booty club. She's trying to find out what I got inside of me. She's trying to find out what's the program running. If I'd have said, yeah, baby, you're going to be in the club? I'm going to have a pocket full of money. I'm going to be in the front row when you start stripping. I'll be, I'm going to load your G-string up. <laughs> so I don't want to see that. I've been riding the wheelhouse then. Because they've already... See, when you interact with low-life scumbag dudes your whole life as a woman, you take for granted everybody's the low-life scum that you've been associating with, see. So they, that's why they come to you a certain way thinking everybody's the same scum that I am. But after I had that conversation with her, she walked around me kind of distant then. When I told her, girl, you don't need to be doing that. You too pretty. You too this that. Now she felt like, I don't know, but I don't know nothing about this kind of a guy, you know. Because she used to the more drags. That she's just been nasty around and low life around, and that's her comfort zone. You know, some women feel funny if you open the door for them. They feel done. You open the door for them, they feel funny. Don't even know how to say thank you. Don't know what to do. Just, oh, 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 oh. I appreciate it. About half crazy because they never had nobody doing anything for them like that. It's bad when you've been degraded your whole life until being degraded is your comfort zone. I expect to be treated like trash. That's bad, man. And that's why even the women have gotten to that level. Have you ever heard Nicki Minaj talk about things that are sexual? It's debased and depraved. It's nasty. They sing about oral anal sex. Amber Rose said Kanye West begged her to do it to him. 
These pretty girls. I'm talking about pretty girls. These ain't ugly. These ain't no scumbag, ugly looking girls now. But who wants them? Gabrielle, you ain't but stay with that guy the rest of her life. She talking about giving me a kiss. Girl, please. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want no hepatitis. <laughs> you will be careful who you talk about getting married to. You be marrying some diseased up scumbag, and here you are got some old nasty disease because you married into a disease. People doing anything you can imagine now. And the gospel, all it does is pull the cup off everything. And God's desire is to repent so I can clean you from all this mess. He says if you confess your sins, he'll have mercy on you. Confess and forsake. You confess your sins, he'll forgive your sins. And then cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's trying to get people cleaned up from the depravity that they entered into. You did this to you. There's nobody to blame but yourself. Because right, right. if it wasn't true, everybody would be like you. Right. You did what you did to you because your peers didn't do it. Right. You are totally responsible for how you are. But guess what? Somebody unrepentant, guess what they always do? Blame somebody else. Yeah. Well, they did this. They told me this. How they treated me. And how they did you a lie. You went and did exactly what you wanted to do because you became depraved and nasty, led by your father, the devil. That's what really happened. Now, you need to repent and ask God to cleanse your nasty soul from this depravity. You see, down here, in this world, you got to be delivered from the world like you're delivered from your mama's womb. You got to let the world spit you out of it to be made free. Life in the world has you still wandering in what we call the matrix. The matrix houses that which is not delivered. Where does it come from? Look over to Exodus. Exodus 13. People will come to me and say, see, one thing I know about you, Price, you tell people a bunch of lies. I said, why you come to that conclusion? I said, because you're making up this trash about a matrix and you can't even find a matrix in the Bible. I said, you a lie. The matrix is in the Bible. You are, you, Price, you're a liar. You're a false prophet. You saw that movie, and you had that movie create that word, and you made up that word based on that movie. That's why I don't even have nothing to do with this mess you trying to tell folk. Because you using a movie in the name of a movie and trying to make it biblical. You lying dog, you. I said, okay, let's see if we can find matrix in the Bible. Look over there at Exodus chapter 13, verse 11. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it to thee. And thou shalt set apart un, upon, unto the Lord all that opens what? The matrix. And every firstling that comes of a beast which thou hast, the male should be the Lord's. What's the word matrix mean? A womb. What's the world and what's the earth at large? It's a big, huge womb. That's all it is. And you got to be birthed and delivered out of it by being born again. And just like the large fish that consumed Jonah, when you get born again and sell out to Jesus, the matrix will do what? They'll spit you out. You'll be extracted from the matrix. You'll be pulled out of it. Now, what attaches you to the matrix? What attaches a baby to the mom or womb? Umbilical cord, right? What comes through an umbilical cord? The nourishment, nutrition. So what's that telling you? As long as that baby's in that womb, it's fed through an outside source, and it's coming from an external food source coming through the mama. Now, what happens you, when you're born? They sever the umbilical cord, correct? Because you become a self-sustaining life type. You don't need your mama's nutrition because now you are developed to be self-contained, self-sustaining. 
and you eat your own food, you digest it, and you get empowered through your own ingestion. That's how you get delivered from the devil's matrix. Remember the movie? When Neo was plugged into the matrix, he had a false sense of reality based on what? The mind was engaged with those computers, which created a, a computer-generated virtual reality. So he was thinking thoughts that made him believe he was alive and functional when in fact he was just laying there in suspended animation plugged into the computer and the computer in turn engaged his mind to make him believe he was living. That's exactly how the devil controls the masses. He's making them believe they're living when in fact they're dead. So when you talk to one of these dead people, you know what you're going to run up against? A person that lives in suspended animation. They have eyes, and Jesus said what? They see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Why? Because they're in suspended animation. When are you in suspended animation every day? When you're asleep. See, animation means you're moving. Suspended animation means you're, you're dormant and you don't move. And you're asleep. And when you're asleep, what's the thing that makes you vulnerable? You're unaware of your environment. You're asleep. You're asleep. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? What's the first thing you want to know? What time is it? What happened? Time was suspended while you slept. You are not consciously aware of time. So you can go to sleep at 12 o'clock, wake up at 8 o'clock, and you don't know how long you were asleep. Because time to you was suspended. So here we are walking around in a world full of people who are stone cold asleep, not being born again. And they walk in a virtual reality that's not even real. And when you talk to them, they come across as caricatures of human beings. They're, they're false. You can, feel, you can see the animated characterizations of themselves. They act like cartoons. They talk like cartoons. If they pray, they pray like a cartoon character. Oh, gracious heavenly father, thou that rides the wind, thou that creates the oceans and the stars. Oh, Lord, we beseech thee. <laughs> I come before thee, O God, as thou humble servant, to present myself unto thee in prayer. It's just crazy. You ever heard anybody start a sentence using the word on? That's religious. <laughs> on today. We, don't nobody talk like that. That's the matrix. That's religious programming. That's not normal. There are things that are germane to being normal. A tuning up preacher is not normal. There's something wrong with him. That's the matrix. Notice how everybody's been so programmed by the matrix for me to accost the matrix makes me evil. Because what am I trying to do? Wake you up out of a deep sleep. You're sleepwalking. Folks will come right here and still be in the matrix, not even know it. They'll be stone cold to sleep. And they'll hear what I'm saying filtered through that mind engaged in the matrix. So you know what they'll, they'll normally do? When you're like that, you are very sensual, so you make every decision you make based on inner, the outer court input into you. So a person that's not alive to God, this is what they do. They watch everybody, and you know what they'll try to do? Act like them. They'll emulate them. But when they pray, you can pray, and when they pray, it sounds fake. But when you pray, it was authentic. But when they pray, everybody thinking like, I sure would they shut up. Oh, and they pray so long and it sounds so stupid. That prayer don't even get to the ceiling. Because they're just emulating other people when they pray. They're saying things they've heard in messages. It's not even real for them. Their minds are shut down and not alive to God. So they're just animated people. Nothing is real. And they live in La La Land. The worst person on earth 
is the person that believes they have what they don't have. You ever seen a rank sinner damned to hell tell you they know the Lord? Yes, Happens all the time. Oh, I know the Lord, honey. Your mama tell you, girl, I know the Lord. He said, mama, no, you don't. You shacking with a man. You smoke dope every night. You get drunk every night. You cuss like a sailor. You have crazy. And you know the Lord? Get your so-and-so out of here. I had you. I kill you. I brought you in the world. I'd take you out. See? But I thought you knew the Lord. Now you're trying to kill me. <laughs> Everybody tells that same lie about knowing the Lord, knowing they don't know the Lord. You know you don't know the Lord. What are you talking about? But see, pride is the thing that shields folk from being saved. Pride is the, is the, the covering over all your sin that won't let you repent. Proud people never make it. Their lives are cursed from the pride within them. A proud person is a damned person because they're reflective of the very nature of the devil. He is the king, the Bible says, as Leviathan, see Leviathan in, in the Bible and Job is a type of the devil. The Bible says he's a king over whom? Over all the children of pride. The devil is the master over proud people. So, man, you walk around proud and you're damned. Proud and damned. That's a bad combination. So, you see now, La La Land, full of perverse people, nasty people, debased people. Sexual perversion bathes them. They live in it. They walk in it. They have no restraint. Their appetites are perverted. Everything about them is just debased and filthy. You go over to 2 Timothy. Don't turn there. Chapter 3. You'll see basically the same character traits outlined here in Romans chapter 1, just repeated again. Saying they have a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Same kind of preachers that hold the truth back in unrighteousness. He says they have a form of godlikeness, but they deny the power thereof. Everybody like this, turn away from them. They learn to entertain you, they learn to enthrall you, and what you pick up coming out of them. It's the same feeling you get from Luther Vandross when he's making runs with his, with his vocal ability. When Luther Vandross, a chair is not a chair. Even when there's no one sitting there. You over there crying. That's what they learn to do. The Bible says they're like a singer of a song. Patty LaBelle. If only you knew how much I do, do love you. I said, you did, you're weeping. Over there weeping like a baby. That's what they're doing in church to people. It's soulish manipulation of the inner man to make you feel things. One need to bind them, making you feel things with that crazy junk she's talking about with a shawl, a prayer shawl on. You done paid $80 for a stupid prayer shawl that she just got from Macy's and sent to you. They had it, she ordered it in your name, they shipped it to your house. She ain't even touched the prayer shawl. Talking about she been laying over it for three years, you know, or something like that. And you done brought this stinking, stank prayer shawl that she got from a drunk behind a liquor store. And you somewhere got that mess wrapped around you praying. <laughs> the devil will make a fool out of you if you got soulish inputs in you. You're looking for something to entertain you and feel something. You're not here to walk in your feelings. You, you're here to obey the truth. I don't have to feel nothing about the truth. Just obey it. If you were in the world, which you had to be once sometime in your life, you always surrounded yourself with music that accommodated the demons living in you. Did you know that? That the music you listened to were worship songs that were paying homage to the demons in you? That's why you listen to certain songs? If you were wild and crazy, you turn on Parliament Funkadelic or something. That's a demon. Talking about a flashlight. Don't nobody, don't nobody know what that was about. I dare anybody to come to me and tell me what flashlight was about. 
You don't even know. Neon light, red light, flashlight. Da, 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 dee, da, 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 da. You don't know what that was about. You just, just, you just over there all on the floor, just all on your knees, just yelling, screaming, just dancing like that was a demon. Skin tight, Ohio players. What? She's a bad, bad missus in them skin tight britches. You just blasting out the street. I just blast, had an eight track back then with a cotton pick and eight track. A eight track? What is this mess, man? Why do you know eight track, man? Young people don't know what you tell me. Hey, yeah, you know, but go get that eight track. Got the uh, eight track. What is that, man? Notice how in your lifetime, everything, thought, everything you took for granted, nobody knows what that is now. You mention it. A uh, eight track. What is this fool talking? A uh, eight track. What is that? You can't even mention a cassette tape now. A cassette. What kind of fool mess is that? A cassette. See, time and technology is getting rid of what you were growing up. It's eradicating your life as far as what was normal to you. But everything you played, it painted a picture, an imaginary escape in your mind into the alter ego that you were trying to live out. In the disco area, going to the club, you had that chic and the freak and the greatest dancer. Sister Sledge, I wonder, wow, he's the greatest. Now, you imagine yourself on the damn floor with that joke. You had all the moves on the damn floor. Like, you're you around, you just. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in love on the damn floor. That joke was smooth. Man. The greatest dancer, I wonder, wow, that I've ever seen. Woo, you just dipping it. Woo. That joke had you in La La Land. You was crazy. You were crazy. But everybody you hung with were crazy like you. Y'all was a, a group of crazy people. And everybody was normal to each other. Except for the square you thought was crazy that was saved. That could see y'all and was praying for y'all. Right. <laughs> yeah, I had one person over there back at the dormitory while y'all, y'all fools in college went to the club. They over there on their knees, Lord, don't let them gals get killed. They crazy, you know that, Lord. But I'm here in a seating form because they could be killed tonight. It's a lot of drills. They're putting in people drinks. It, it, that club can get shot up, burned down to the ground for all I know. But Lord, they're up here in this dormitory with me on my floor. And I'm here all night praying for your crazy butt and your running buddies. God got one saint. That's the only thing to keep you. You were crazy. Check a person's music. Check their level of sanity. You don't even know what a rapper nowadays is even saying. I don't know anything Future says. Nothing. That'd be it. It's crazy. I don't know what. I asked the, ask the young person, what did he just say? Man, he was talking about, you know, down to the drug trap and everything, man. How, um, for real, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't hear it. You didn't understand what he was saying. No, I didn't understand nothing he said. That mess is crazy. No more friend. No more friend. No more friend. No more friend. Y'all thought they said the whole song. No more friend. And down with my day one crew. I don't need no more friend. No more friend. That's just crazy. And people are feeding themselves on insanity and nothingness until their insides become debased and full of nothing. They can't think, they can't solve a math problem because through a transference of spirits, the insanity in these rappers are now input into these people's souls and they lost their minds. Get a young girl, get your daughter. That's what's wrong with her mind. A no good bomb is normal to them. You can normalize to accommodate a bomb. Compliment and supplement a bomb. A nothing, a nobody, trash. And that's your, that's your comfort zone. It came through the music. Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Kanye West, Gucci Mane, Waka Flocka Flame, Nas, Nelly. Nelly? That sounds like some old hag from Tennessee. <laughs> a mule or something, you know. 
Hey, bring Nelly around here to plow the North 40. And you, a rapper come around with a head rag on. Tupac with an Aunt Your Mama rag, rag on his head. Like, and they like, he's Christ. Tupac is a prophetic prophet of our age. Tupac with his head rag on. This is La La Land. I'm describing crazy to you. This is what the world has degenerated to. This is insane. And the reason why we get so much vitriol and hatred coming our way, because we're exposing the demonic elements that have taken these people's minds over, and it offends them. You might laugh at it, but the, the, the laughter of it and the laughter about it is the reflection of the insanity embedded in it. It's so crazy that all you can do is laugh at it because it's insane. It's insane. A 50-year-old man like Jay-Z rapping that dumb junk he's talking about just, just stupid. And somebody is placing some kind of intrinsic value in it. The guy's a moron. He's crazy. He's insane. He has the internet of a third grade child. If that, I might be giving him too much credence. And he's able to be almost a billionaire. That's telling you what state the rest of the people are in. This is not exalting him as a genius. It's a reflection of how pitiful society is that they follow this dumbed down junk. That's why we need some saints to extract themselves from it, get with the Lord, become sane again and normal so God can use us to rescue these folk from depravity and hell as it's coming upon them. It's not a pretty job. It's nasty. It's not sanitary. It's a nasty job, but somebody got to do it. Dealing with the human soul is a nasty place, man. Human souls are filthy. And if you're going to conduct any kind of a rescue operation, you got to be be real, real, real hardened inside against the demons. Because demons will say anything to you. They'll spit on you. They'll slap you. They slap Jesus. They spat on Jesus. They hated Jesus. Demons are not user friendly. They hate everybody equally. So before you go and engage this warfare, you got to know this ain't for tenderonies and people who are faint of heart because it's brutal. That's why God has to heal you up and make you whole to engage the devil. Because he knows the devil has no restraint as far as what he'll do. They're nasty. You go casting out demons, I've done it. You cast out demons and you got a homosexual spewing up semen and urine that he's been drinking. Feces coming out of his mouth. The stench of the room will knock a dog down. And you got a tender on talking about, ugh. Look, you, look, you get out of here. This ain't the place for you. It's nasty. This child talking about oral anal sex, you know what's living in that child? That's a canine spirit. That girl got a dog down in her. You can't address that thing like that. When you cast that thing out, you'll smell the smell and the stench of the demons leaving. A breath will smell just like feces. You'll lose your lunch behind this stuff if you don't have a strong institution, a strong, a strong intestinal fortitude because, hey, it's not pretty, it's not nice. Nice. People have done things that would make a dog vomit. It ain't nice, man. The gathering in Moniac wasn't pretty in, in, in Mark chapter 5. He was crazy in a tomb, cutting himself every day. Depraved, insane. You can't go into this man with some kind of old lightweight, tender makeup inside of you. You got to get strong enough yourself to be a deliverer. You can't rescue people and you all tender and rejected and easily offended and, man, I don't like what you said to me. You're not respecting me. You think the devil respects you? You think the devil is going to ever like you? No. You got to get hardened inside. You need battle-hardened warriors in this who are not easily offended. They're long-suffering because they're able to suffer long. You can't go into combat as a tender person, man. This thing ain't for tender people. That's why God is trying to pour some steel and concrete down into us. We're seeing this thing happen. Look at you. This is going to be a, a, this is going to be a different kind of world. We're living through, y'all. This is going to be a different deal this time. Jude is just one chapter in Jude. 
Let's read through it real fast. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and father of, and brother of James. Servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified by God. Sanctified from what? Sodomites. This is going to be a saint sodomized sodomite conflict. Why is church so disempowered and why do so few people come to engage in this warfare? Because most church people are practicing sodomites. They engage in oral sex and it's disempowered them totally from God's army. They can't fight the devil because the devil is the king of Sodom that Abraham interacted with before Melchizedek. Satan rules sodomites. So when you have been a participant in sodomy, if you haven't been delivered of it, when I mention attacking the devil, the sodomite nature in you says, oh, no, no, I'm not going to attack a sodomite because I'm, I'm a sodomite. So the devil embedded oral sex in the church and told people the marriage bed is not defiled. And he got you. So you can't war against Satan effectively because you are Satan. You're part of the body of Satan. So you can't fight him. So when you preach this gospel, the separator for Omega Ministries that's going to set us apart from a whole lot of ministry is that we come against oral sodomy. And that's when you find a whole bunch of church folk drop out. They'll be on our Facebook group arguing like mad men. Over eating out of the toilet. That's right. Trying to prove it is valid in God's eyesight. God ain't ruling no more sodomites. No. When you're sanctified, you're sanctified from sodomy. Right. The devil is the king of Sodom. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He outlined it in Romans chapter 1 to show you what he's talking about. You're taking the natural use and turning it into that which is against nature. Your mouth is for eating, your sexual organs are for sex. How are you going to confuse that? I'm eating sexual organs? Your mind is diametrically opposed to God. It's flip-flopped. You're thinking opposites. And when your thinking has been perverted, you'll twist everything, including the Bible. They'll scripture twist the Bible because they got perverse minds. Have you ever talked to somebody and they misunderstand everything you say? And you're looking at them, you're thinking, how did you get that out of what I said? Did, did, did you hear what I told you? Yeah, you called me ugly. I didn't, even, I didn't even say nothing about you. I was talking about something else. Have you ever talked about something else and somebody appended to themselves? You're talking about, you know, these people over here, they're crazy and this, that, and the other, and they were doing this over there and this, that, and the other. Then they said, well, I, I wasn't doing it. I, nobody even said nothing about you. How you get you out of this? I met this woman, and she was out there. She was in there. Well, I, I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm talking about this woman I saw down on 10th Street. How would you project yourself into it? See, that's a mind. They need to die to everything concerning self. And you know, some people talk, you can look right in the mouth and can't understand nothing they're saying. You're men about like that. You looking, you listening intently. Just zero in on their mouth. I don't understand nothing you're saying. You speak in English and I can't even understand it. That's bad. They talk in psychological mumbo jumbo. You see, back when I was a child, and as I look at the desperation of what was going on, and, and I fabricated in my mind that uh, my mama, when she came through the door, you know, she was telling me these things. And when I looked around, I went outside after that, and uh, next thing I know, uh, uh, somebody came up the street, and they got, got in the car with them and went up to the store. And uh, when I got to the store, I went and bought myself a, a Coke. I got a Coke. When I went back in and got myself a Red Rock ginger ale because my mama, she liked to drink them too. And my brother, he came around the corner and he had two guys with him. And they went over to the liquor store and got a fill for liquor. Came back over to where I was standing and told me that I need to go down to Macon to pick up my cousin. When I went down to Macon and picked up my cousin, my cousin came out to the car. He had, you know, my cousin got one leg. And my cousin, he limped to the car because he got that leg. He was dragging him behind him. He got my car. And, you then you putting out a 45, they're blowing your brains out there, <laughs> killing yourself. See, it's something that are so crazy. 
that you don't want to try to understand under that, man. You can talk to somebody, listen intently, and not understand anything they're saying. That's, a, that's demonic. It's witch speak, they call it. A witch, when they're talking to you, they couch what they're trying to do in witch speak so you can't really understand what they're saying. They witch speak. Have you, have you ever seen Jake start talking real fast? That's witch speak. It's designed to get you emotionally worked up with no substance to it. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Don't have no substance. But repetition of witch speak, witch speak will get you excited inside. That's why when people sing, they say the same thing over, over and over again. They get you worked up emotionally with no substance. Saying the same thing over and over again. And you can't even understand what you're crying about. You don't even know what's going on. Sweetest taboo, you know. <laughs> Sade. Your love is king. Your love is king. She's down, she didn't holler, open her mouth. Got them bad feet, she's bad feet. It's in a, and God, yeah, that Sade, man, I don't know what it is about Sade. Yeah. She just put me in this, this mood, man. I'm getting kind of, I'm getting kind of swept away. Yeah, put that Sade back on, man. She said my love was king. King. That's witch. That's a witch. Divining on you. Girl say, I need a baker. I'm caught up in a rapture with you. I don't even know what she was talking about, really, but. It just sounds so right when she said it. She was standing there, had her legs on with that dress on. Seeing them legs, she got some nice legs to it. Caught up in a rapture with you. Oh. I was crying, I was crying like a baby. I was at the concert, I was crying like a baby. That's a witch. Divining on you, and your mind just caught up in the matrix. The rapture is the matrix. You caught up in it, man. It just, it just gets you out there in a fairy tale. A lie told by a fairy. That's what a fairy tale does. And a fairy is a demon. That music, man, I'm telling you, is in the music. The poison is in the music. That's what got you. You went to sleep with that stuff playing over you and wake, woke up with it playing over you. It was in your car. It was at your house, on your job, everywhere you went was bathed in music to accentuate and to actually worship the demons living in you. And it empowered those demons to have you think in their thoughts and to be a reflection of them. This is a stealth warfare. So you sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied, beloved, when I, have, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the com common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly do what? Amen. Contend for the faith. You got to fight. I was going to talk about salvation and exhort you and talk about how good the Lord was. But then I thought again, man, you better fight for what you believe. I had to change the message up, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in and you're not aware of them who were before of old, of old ordained to this damnation, this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into what? Uncontrolled desires and lust, lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So he saves everybody coming across the, the Red Sea, but he kills everybody in the wilderness. Have you noticed that? That everybody crossed the Red Sea with no disparities, then he called everybody in the wilderness. So everybody comes out, but everybody don't go in. That's what's happening right now. God is calling the church. He's getting rid of that which he can't use in his final conflict. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. You see how everybody begins with God and then leaves? They came out of Egypt, stuck coming with God, then God destroyed them. The angels left their first habitation, then they are now reserved in judgment. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, it keeps going. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, 
giving themselves over to what? Fornication and going after strange flesh. What strange flesh? Flesh of another kind. Bestiality. That's what these folk are doing now. A lot of these folk laying down with dogs. And are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Now, I'm going to stop right there in your spare time and your steady time. Keep reading that and finish that up. But I want to harp on filthy dreamers. The filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. They're dreamers, fantasy stricken. They live in a make believe world in the Matrix. They dream up junk and call it a revelation of God and a dream God gave them, a vision God gave me. One of the Bynum does it all the time. One of the Bynum thinks of far fetched, crazy junk, and the people get enthralled by it. And it's just stupid. Louis Farrakhan said he was flying around in a spaceship with Elijah Muhammad and Allah. And nobody in the room thinks anything is wrong here with this. He was in a spaceship with Elijah Muhammad and Allah. And the guy on the corner with a bean pie, fresh fruit, and a first call will kill me when I say, why would you listen to a man flying around in a spaceship with Elijah Muhammad and Allah? He'll think that Farrakhan is totally right and I'm wrong. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. And this, what I'm saying right here now, that which is instigated, instigated and instilled in people by these filthy dreamers has made church people afraid of them, which means you're a shadow boxer. You're afraid of a fantasy. You're afraid of a make-believe world. You're afraid of a devil that deals in magic and illusions, smoke and mirrors, and sleight of hand. He's created an atmosphere to make you afraid of nothing. It's not even real. It's not even there. But he put the fear where? On the inside of you. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Love, power, and what? A sound mind. A mind that has been what? Restored again. When you got fantasies in you, Go back to the music now. They sang it into you. Escape the fantasy in the music. You become fearful because you're being shaken awake out of the fantasy. If somebody's telling you the truth, it's like dropping a hydrogen bomb down in you because it's shaking you awake from fantasies. I can't, you, I can't see what you mean by uh, T.D. Jakes. I don't understand what you're saying. You've been bathed in fantasy so long that it wakes you up and shocks you that something is wrong with him because you thought the fantasy was real. You thought Kenneth Copeland and jo Joel Osteen and Kenneth Hagen and, and Jesse Duplantis and Creflo Dollar and all these folk was real. Leroy Thompson, Miles Monroe, you think all that's real. All of it's fake. So how you know it's fake? Has no substance, not take you anywhere, not distract you from the world. Anything that's leading you back to the world is leading you back to Oz, Wonderland with Alice. You're down in Wonderland with Alice. You're down at Disney World or Disneyland. You're bathed in fantasies and make-believe animated characters like Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and Goofy and Donald Duck. That's your life. You don't even know it now. Think about what I'm saying. Totally fantasy-stricken. Thinking what is real and is false and you're making it real. And somebody tells you all oh, that's just garbage, data dump it all. You know what people usually do? Try to find some kind of way to make it all right. Well, you know, it's some good things they say too. Data dump it all. Yeah. You know what they hold on to? Back over in Chicago on the corner of Filth and Ivy. Sitting down in that little Baptist church down there in the corner is my mama. And if I say that all that is wrong, I'm putting my mama in hell. So I got to somehow make allowances for my mama. Won't work. Won't work. 
Your mama got to come out like anybody else. Your grandmama got to come out like anybody else. Your brother got to come out like anybody else. The Bible says a bishop, a deacon, must be the husband of one wife. Your sister can't be no pastor. Your mama can't be no pastor. Your auntie can't be no pastor. According to the scriptures. Well, you know, God can use anybody. He used Deborah. Well, here's the Bible right here. You read it for yourself in 1 Timothy chapter 3 in Titus. This is what the Bible says. Well, I, I, I got to find a way to get my mama saved. She out there doing this, and I got to make sure my mama saved. So I got to downgrade the Bible and live in fantasy to accommodate my mama because the truth is too austere. The truth is too narrow. It's a narrow way and few that be that find it, he said. I got to expand the truth and the pathway to accommodate my mama. No, your mama got to narrow down to accommodate God. And you know what happens to you if you don't let it go? You will end up not liking God because God is not fair. Now, your mama is a rebel against God. God is totally fair, but your mama rebelling against him. And he's not going to change one jot or one tittle. Every I will be dotted. Every T is crossed. If you want to be saved, you better do the changing because I am the Lord your God and I change not. He's going to do exactly what he said, how he said he's going to do it, when he said he's going to do it. He's not going to vary one inch from what he said. And you better let all emotions go, all feelings go. You better get your emotions and feelings sanctified so God can feel you and use you. Per adventure, you might just save your mama. But if you downgrade that word to accommodate her, you're damning her soul because you don't stand against what's wrong. Somebody's right and somebody's wrong. Can't downgrade the Bible for anybody because you're not doing them any kind of a justice or service. You're damning them. That's what the Bible tells us about being a pastor or a deacon. Qualification for both offices is the husband of one wife. That disqualifies every woman. If you feel some kind of a way about it, you better find out why you hate God and his word. You better find out why you hate God and his word. Because that's your real problem. It ain't nothing wrong with God. I hate what he said. And I want him to change to accommodate me. Not doing it. He don't care nothing about your stupid feminism and all this junk they told you. You better downgrade all that junk and accommodate the Lord God Almighty in your life. So what's God's way of dealing with all of this? Acts chapter 1. How do we get this over with and just bring these folk up out of fantasy? The quick easy answer is we can't we can't do anything about it there's nothing a human can do to rescue them but how does God rescue them Acts chapter 1 verse 7 and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father have put in his own power but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The answer is not something, it's somebody. We have to fast and pray ourselves into a place of consecration, sanctification to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The only way to save these insane people is for the Holy Ghost to make an appearance. Here's the problem that we got to stop pretending about. There ain't been no outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Stop trying to go and shout him up and jump him up and yell him up and scream and run around the church and try to work him up in services. There ain't no power, man. There ain't no power. You can shake and you can dance till your bunions start smoking. There ain't no power. The folks still sick. They still demon possessed. They still crazy. They still weird because there's no real visitation. You got to have an actual visitation from heaven now and an intervention coming from God, period. What makes me a candidate for real intervention is I acknowledge that the thing ain't happening. Folk that live in pretense and make believe, they won't even acknowledge they don't have the power. There's nothing happening. You ever somebody commanding the devil, you know they got no power. I command you, Satan, take your hands off of them and got no power. The devil ain't moved by verbiage. You got to really have power. 
And what's the power given for? To be a witness. Greek word martyrs. To be a martyr. What does he want? A vessel. So you got to get your mind conditioned to understand this one thing. All God wants is a vessel. A vessel is just a vehicle of expression for God. He wants mankind and human personality to decrease. And just that's it, flatline. And he wants a vessel. Give me a body, according to Romans 12, 1. A body, that's all he wants. You don't have to think, plan, plot, argue, debate, go back and forth. Give him a body. All I want is a body. Give me a body, and I'll do what I need to do. If you can give me a body that won't have you touching the ark. You remember the man taught, touched the ark and fell dead? He said, don't contaminate the body with your input. I don't need you to think. I don't need you to make suggestions. I know what I'm doing. Give me a body. And the first thing that happens when God comes upon you, you won't be reactionary to your environment. You know, if God really takes you over, then no input from the outside of you will make you react to it. Because you know, you know what you'll lose? You'll lose any identification with self so that nothing offends you. Because I don't have anything to be offended. I don't, I don't have any skin in the game. It's God's vessel. I'm just around. I'll brush the teeth. I'll comb the hair. I'll give it a bath. But the Bible says the Lord is for your body, and your body is for the Lord. Sin is the hijacking of God's body to use for your pleasure. That's all it is. Sin is taking God's body that he should be using, his vessel of expression, and using it for me to gratify my own lust and desires at God's expense. I'm using God's vessel to gratify me, and God has no vehicle of expression himself. And that's the years you spend in sin right there. And guess what? The longer you stay out there doing that, the more perverse and the more degraded you'll become. Because your appetites will become more and more degraded the longer you stay away from God. And you become depraved, you become filthy, you lose your mind until you just become just a pile of human yeah. body waste just wallowing around in depravity and sewer water. And that's your norm now. I don't have to be there. I can check your life. And I can watch you from when you started to fornicate and go out in the world, you begin to, de to, to, to degrade. You begin to corrupt. Your activities got more and more rotten with time because you were getting further away from God in your mind. And it's reflected in your sexual activities. The further you get away from it, the, more you, the longer you stay in it, the more corrupted and degenerate you become because you're leaving God in your mind. The further you go out now, the more depraved you get. That's why you be, people become cannibals. They become sexual predators. They become uh, serial killers. All that is telling you these are acts of depravity as the mind wander further away from God until they entered into the stages of reprobation. So you say salvation is one simple thing. I come to myself. I repent of taking God's tools, his body, and using it for me. Give the body back, and I just live a life of sanctification to cleanse this body so you can cohabitate with me and live here and express yourself. I don't have any, any, any desires. I don't want anything. It's not seeking prosperity and money like Creflo Dollar telling you that lie. It's giving him a body back, that salvation. And he'll do whatever he wants to do through it and with it. And it's none of your business, really. A body is a tool. It's like a car. A body is not you. A body is what you live in. You're just giving it back to God. We've taken over God's body. And it leads to reprobate minds. Unrestrained lust and desires, and final, finally, insanity. What's the prototype of the insane man? They'll be characterized by becoming sodomites. What's a sodomite, really? To wrap it up, a sodomite is somebody totally consumed with themselves. Till they'll take the gospel when it's preached to them, and automatically in their own mind, they'll modify it and then get their own interpretation of it and express that interpretation as if it's valid. There's nothing you can do with that. 
I can't fix it from right here where I'm standing. I can preach this right here in a generic sense. I can't control what the mind does with the information. You take that information and pervert it and twist it in your own mind and come up with some kind of a presentation based on your fantasies, you'll walk in that. But you can always pick it out because they look like an animated cartoon character. In real practical terms, as far as expressing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, and faith, they can't do it because it's not the life type of God. So they're not really selfless. So in any circumstances, they'll think of themselves first. Have a dinner or a cookout, you'll see a manifest every time. The plate will be stacked to the ceiling. Because that's what they really are. They're full of self. They eat like great Dane dogs because they're full of themselves. Every appetite is reflective of the self-life. Too much of everything is always around them because they're just thinking about themselves. They hoard up everything for self. Hoarders. So what you going to do with all this stuff? Well, I might, you, I might need it. Don't throw it away. <laughs> Go to your mama's house. You got junk. They've been there for 30 years, back in the closet, under, under all kinds of stuff. Just you dug out the closet, pulled out everything, and got this one thing. My mama take this down to the uh, Salvation Army. You're not going to, no, girl, no, no. I'll be, I'm, girl, put that back. I might need that. It's been in there for 60 years. It's not even open. It's still in the package. But a hoarder, into themselves so deeply. I just want to have this stuff just packed up in the house. And instead of buying new stuff, more stuff. They bought the same things over the years 10 times. Don't even know they got 10 of them. It was on sale. So I just got it. Got, you know, like 75 bottles of Clorox. Don't even have a washing machine. I just thought somebody might need it. Somebody might want to use it. You, this stuff will drive you crazy. We have got to get back to the Lord. We've got to get our minds anchored in the Lord and be steadfast and immovable in God so God can totally renovate us from head to foot. And for God's sake, don't go to a stinking church and sit through rituals that are so dumb and stupid that anybody knows this is moronic. What are you wasting your time doing that stupid mess for all these years? To sit in church week after week, month after month, Sunday and Wednesday, week after week, knowing it's stupid. And you're just wasting your time that could be given over to God to get yourself perfected to meet him when he returns. And you're wasting all of your time in a fabricated make-believe matrix for nothing. Wasting the time and life God gave you to prepare you to get ready to leave here right. And you've wasted it paying a tithe to a stupid church when a New Testament doctrine does not encompass tithing. There ain't nothing in the New Testament about paying a tithe. It's made up. It's part of the fantasy-stricken matrix. A tithe is 10% of the agricultural crop that the Jews were told to give to the temple so the priest in the temple would have food. That's why it says you need to bring money or supplies so I'll have food in my storehouse for what God to feed these priests who, as, Le as the Levitical tribe, the Levites, didn't have farmland. That's all it was. It was a temporary element to pay those priests agricultural supplies so they wouldn't starve to death and eat. You don't see the Apostle Paul mentioning tithing one time. He wrote the whole New Testament almost and never mentioned it. But he did mention this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. You give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Not grudgingly, nor of what? Necessity. necessity. You can't find a 10% nowhere in the New Testament about you giving money to a dumb church. It's man-made, fabricated, make-believe illusions that they preached to make these preachers rich. Because what did it do to you? It obligated you to make sure that Creflo's $65 million Gulfstream jet was paid for. To make sure his Bentley could get the oil change, causing $350 every time you change it. 
to make sure his kids went to private schools, to make sure the Mercedes his wife drives is always immaculate, to make sure his $3 million mansion has well manicured lawns, to make Kenneth Copeland worth $760 million, telling that lie of a seed faith offering. That's a damnable, filthy doctrine birthed in the bowels of hell. I say that, and the people indoctrinated about it, covered in an altar that it, that's been created in them through continual preaching of it, they have a demon sitting up in them that gets offended by what I'm saying right now. And they'll try to say, I know one thing, my time got me blessed. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Because the same thing you got, the Muslim living next to you got the same house you got. See how stupid it is? If the tithe got you blessed, how the Muslim and the Hindu down the street got the same house you got? Got a better car than you. There are kids in private schools like you, and they serve Buddha. You got what you got because you got a doctorate in mathematics and you're an engineer. Stop letting the devil make a fool out of you. Come January 1st in a couple of months, it's going to be the year. 2018 is the year of increase, the year of return, the year of glory, the year of the heavy anointing, the year of the visitation, the year of whatever junk they make up for that year. Now hurry, hurry, now run up front. They come to the front, throwing money on the altar in the envelope. You go, Leroy Thompson and Cruffalo just dancing on the money. Get some of this annoying. Get some of this annoying. Walking on the envelopes of money. Get some of this annoying. You better hurry up. And the folk just running up there crazy it drives you out of your senses it turns you into a maniac how could you with an education you're intellectual you got academic proficiency you came through school you learned, you made good grades how did you sit in there and go for that dumb jump you know how you did it the magician divined a spell on you and drove you out of your mind your thoughts were nowhere near normal. This is la la land. Every, everything on TV, the news, Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, Shepard Smith, all these folk in la la land. Oprah is a witch in la la land. All these folk you see now, Wendy Williams, all these talk shows, The View, The Real, la la land. Just crazy, just make believe, talking about nothing all day, thinking up junk to talk about on the, the Today Show, all the early morning, morning shows, La La Land. Medea, a drag queen, coming out with a Halloween movie, La La Land. And they're going to make him a Christian, La La Land. Tyler Perry is in La La Land. It's La La Land. It's fantasy stricken, it's crazy. And God is saying, Wake up, thou that sleepeth. And God will provide you with light to lighten your darkened soul. It happened to you in Romans chapter 1. Their the souls were darkened. God is trying to turn the lights back on in the house so you can see. Look, when you're looking for a black pointed hat, a long black robe, and a broomstick, looking for a witch, that's the devil. That's what the devil presented as a witch. So you would recognize your girlfriend as a witch. Your mama is a witch. Your husband is a warlock. The pastor is a warlock. The pastor's wife is a witch. The deacons are warlocks. The people singing in the choir are witches. See, the devil don't let you see what he's really doing. The witchcraft is a work of the flesh. Read it for yourself in Galatians chapter 5. You are being divined upon all day on your job. They use witchcraft to control you. They make you feel obligated. They make you feel like, you know, you got to do this. Anytime you feel that thing in you that you feel obligated to do and you, you're going to be feeling put out or left out or being ostracized or not a part of whatever because you don't participate, that's witchcraft. You're not obligated to do anything. We tell you about doing this tabernacle. If you give, good. If you don't, good. You don't hear me mention a tithe for this or uh, give a seed faith offering. I tell you about it, what we're doing. If you don't feel led to do it, Go do whatever you're doing and God bless you. I hope you make it. I don't care nothing about you one way or the other. Because unless the Lord builds a house, he that labors, labors in vain. You got to get in this thing for you. Stop letting people obligate you. 
They got these folk walking around every year with a pastor's appreciation because the pastor knows that's his payday for the year. <laughs> See, on the 31st of August every year, we have the pastor appreciation dinner. And, you know, we usually raise about two or $300,000 for the pastor and his family to bless him. Now, his salary is $150,000 a year, but we try to do a special something for him. And we bought, last year we bought his wife a Rolls Royce, and this year we're going to try to get her a Bentley. You know, both of them white. So I want you to give. Now we ask for everybody to give a thousand dollars. You know how much money? If you get a, a four thousand member church, and you talking about these churches are running twenty five thousand folks, you know how much money they're taking every Sunday? Between two and six million dollars every Sunday. The money, the money that's in religion, is unbelievable. The amounts of money that's out there, and they're still beating you over the head for more. And a guy can stand in a pulpit and tell you that he needs a $65 million jet. You got Spirit, you got Southwest, you got Delta, and I don't even know the rest of the airline running. Why would any moron need a $65 million jet? And people stupid enough to believe that dumb junk and think it's somehow godly and get mad at me and call me jealous because I'm saying, you're losing your mind. You've been driven out of your senses by this, these warlocks and these magicians in the pulpit. Come to yourself. Shake yourself. Wake up out of the stupor. Divest yourself of all that crazy music that drove you crazy and put you in a fantasy-stricken state. Stop looking at all these stupid movies and TV shows like Scandal and Empire and Mary Jane. Get rid of that stuff, man. These folks need help. The little Washington girl on, on Scandal needs help. Lord knows Gabrielle Union needs help. Somebody need to reach these folk, man. We got to pray for these folk. I don't, I'm not trying to say anything bad about Gabrielle Union because everybody doing what she's talking about. That thing is a commonplace thing now that these women talking to each other about it and bragging about it. They're proud of it. They'll do anything to a guy. And tell you I'm a diva on top of my game. I know how to drive a man crazy in a bed. But oh, they're doing anything. Because what they're dealing with is a bunch of homosexuals. These girls strapping on penises, plastic penises, and sodomizing the men. Because the guy got to be penetrated because he's such a homosexual. I got to take on the workings of a homosexual man to please my man. Else he'll leave me. That's rock bottom. That's rock bottom. I perform oral sex on him because he's a homosexual. And he got to have that because I know he's a homosexual. He got to have that. Or else he's going to leave me for another man. Matter of fact, two years ago, he left me for another man and came back. And I know I got to do what that man was doing to him to keep him. And baby, I can't sleep by myself. I'll do anything because I can't be lonely. The song told you, I just don't want to be lonely. I just don't want to be lonely. And that's what they're doing. They're doing anything they got to do, no matter how depraved, to keep that sissy satisfied. A woman married to a homosexual man. You ain't got no money Oprah got to keep stepping back in the back house like she built him a house in the back. So her and Gail could have free reign in the big house. Come on, man. I'm crazy. I ain't the one that's crazy. If you can't see this, ask God to take them blinders off of you so you can really see. And these folks are the ones feeding you, the depravity that they're feeding you. You know why they're doing it? All the devil is doing is he's just stockpiling sodomites in positions of authority and preeminence so you can see them. So they can feed the masses to prepare them to receive a sodomite antichrist. What are they doing? He knows that the Antichrist is homosexual. He got to prepare your inner man to receive him when he comes. So he set up the sodomites as his priests and priestesses to feed you to prepare for him when he comes. That's why they're everywhere from Ellen DeGeneres to Don Lemon to Anderson Cooper to Shepard Smith, all sodomites. Robin Robbins, Roberts, or whatever name is in the morning, lesbian. He knows what he's doing, man. He's getting you used to them. He's preparing you to receive the antichrist when he comes, so you won't recoil from him being a homosexual. You'll embrace him because you'll be just like him.
He invaded the church with a sodomite spirit, using an oral sex as an inroad, and that's how he's taken over the masses. But God is calling for a few good men and women who will say, you know what, God? I'm sanctifying myself from the sodomite spirit. I'm consecrating myself unto you. It's not pretty, God. It's hardcore what I'm being told. I got to really process this thing because it's a rude awakening. This thing is shaking me to the core, really. But you know what, God? I can see this thing. When I really take a step back, and Jesus, you said the days of Noah and the days of Lot, cause and effect, the fallen angels came down in Genesis chapter 6, creating the days of Noah. That spirit, when it gets inside of a person, think of the logic of it. If a fallen angel gets in the altar today, what's, what's so specific about a fallen, a fallen angel that would change him? No gender specificity. They're not male nor female. He's got to make altar into an androgen to accommodate the fallen angel. And that's how you get Sodom and Gomorrah. All you got to do is get the demons who are not gender specific, they're spirits, and the fallen angels to get embodied in a human, and the human all by himself or herself will become an androgen with no gender. Caitlyn Jenner, really Bruce Jenner, because that fallen angel got into them, or that demon got into them who has no gender. And he'll begin to work into you non-gender specific behavior and appetites because it doesn't have any gender. It can be with anything or anybody. They'll even get into pigs in Jesus' day in Mark chapter 5 and drive the pigs crazy. What we're about to see is this. I'll tell you prof prophetically what's about to happen. The day of the nuclear family, mother, father, and child is over. People will, be, will begin to live in homes as homosexual couples and non-gender specific couples. They'll be like orgy palaces where everybody just lives together. They're going to amalgamate their income to live in apartments and houses together and share the rent or buy the house together. They might buy a 10-bedroom house with all these different people just piled in there with the kids in tow also. So they'll have kids by different people maybe living in the house. They got them on the internet now. Young girls are now in their 20s, getting with one man. Now, it was six of them I saw in there the other day, living together as his concubines. The thing about the girls, they're all androgynous and bisexual, so they like each other. And the man is like the father or the, or the husband in the home, and they all serve him together. These are all black folk. And we just live in a, and they all get pregnant by him, have six, seven babies in there with six, seven women, and he's like the little captain of the ship in a polygamy relationship living in one house. That's going to break out like a firestorm. You mark my words. You're going to find people who have a boyfriend or girlfriend who have another couple that's a boyfriend or girlfriend, another couple that's a boyfriend or girlfriend. They're going to get a place together, nobody married, having kids and everything up in there in a commune. The day of the gender specific husband, wife, mother, father relationship is coming to an end in the devil's economy. You can see it happening to your kids. They begin to amalgamate into the next social structure, which is called postmodernism. Well, Jesus Christ is no more germane to us. All that religious stuff is washed away. We just do what we do. They have these, what they call jug juggaloo festivals in Washington. Look it up on, fa on YouTube, Juggaloo, J-U-G-A-L-O-O, -O, where they get together and nobody judges anybody. You come as anything you are, and everybody loves everybody together. You can be anything you say, transgender, homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, it don't make no difference. We, our whole thing is love. People yell that at me all the time when I'm, when I'm giving these messages. You don't have any love. All we're called to do as a church is love. That's a love lie. Yeah, we're not just called to love people. We're called to warn the righteous and warn the wicked. We're, we're called to tell the truth. We're called to, to preach holiness and sanctification to people. We're called to preach against sin and to uplift righteousness. It's more to this than just loving people. You just love people, they'll come. No, they won't. They'll spit in your face. You've got to tell the truth, man, to reflect love. If you love folks, tell them the truth. We're moving into a paradigm on this planet 
whereby the nuclear family that you have known your whole life is going away and people are going to live in communes as animals having sex with each other like dogs. I was at Georgia Tech and Wake Forest game last night to see that football game. When those girls came out of those college dormitories, I thought I was in the middle of a strip show. I mean, if you take Georgia Tech now, you got to have a 4.0 before you walk in the door. So these are the highest academic folks on the planet. And this is the feeling you got as you watch them. They walk out there, the girls would, and they'd be with like, the guys would be with the girls all, you know, in groups and stuff. But the guys look like nerds. You know what I'm saying? You know how the guy got on horn rim glasses and he's a he's at Georgia Tech now. He's a, a guy that's a nerd, you know, top heavy and real academic. But the girls look like sex pots. And I was with a couple of guys, and one of the guys said, he said to me, looking at the girl, saying, You know he can't handle her. That's how it looked to it. It looked like grown women with little boys, as I looked. And they were everywhere. They girls were just sex pots. They even walked like sex pots, dressed like sex pots. And the guys were like little boys, like they were in third grade or something. That's telling you what's going on. The devil's about to dominate the world with these sexed up women. And these boys are going to be victimized. They can't handle this, man. This is a freight train right here coming at these boys. They won't be able to handle this. And I'm talking about black white, Hispanic, Oriental, and, and I couldn't believe this. The sexiest things walking around with all everything hanging out there were the Indian girls from India. Normally the Indian girls, you might think they have on a robe and a headscarf and all that. Not now, buddy. Not now. Not now. And these grown women, and they're 19 years old. These, these women, grown women, 19 years old. And them little old 18, 19 year old boys, they ain't gonna be able to deal with this, man. It's too strong. And the music and all that hip hop and all that sex music has turned these girls into a firestorm. That's why I tell all men, before you go out here in this, man, you better get with God and let him purge every vestige of lust out of your soul. Because this thing here is so strong that if you can be taken out, you will be taken out. Ask old Samson. He thought he was anointed until Delilah showed up. It's real, man. We're going into another round. It's fantasy stricken and it's la la land. When you present sexual images of women and the women try to be them and the guys lust after that image, it's going to turn, it turns society into a woman worshiping society where the female form is God now and not Jesus Christ. So the boys become subservient to the female form and the women stand there stacked up stallions I mean fine as they can be walking around but all the guys got to do one thing bow down when I come through here y'all bow down because you worship the goddesses the divas down here that's what we're going to be looking at it's going to destroy the nuclear home and only the saints of God can stand against it because the devil through all these things I've described today has actually in real time fabricated la la land and he's saying to everybody, you slap a newborn baby on the butt at the hospital, and the doctor will tell that baby, son, welcome to La La Land. It's a make-believe virtual world created by the devil, and we've got to escape it. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for the word of God. Take these words and make them alive in the ears of the hearers. Quicken these words, God, and change us using these words. Let these words be like the pen of a ready writer. Let it be like a chisel. This chiseling out in the human heart, the reality. We got to be awakened all over in Europe, the Middle East, the Far East, down in Australia, throughout the continental United States, South America, Canada, over in the islands in the South Pacific, Hawaii, and, and Fiji, and all those islands. Everybody can get access to this. Wake them up. Shake them up. I'm praying for a visitation from heaven. You, God, have got to come to earth like you did in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and see about this thing. If you don't save these people, there, there's nothing we can do about this. You look at your own kids and you yelled at them, you shouted at them, you beat them in the head with a pipe with your words. And they still go right into what you told them not to do. Like you didn't say a word, they go right to their own demise. 
they go right to the most stinking, filthy trash on earth, having been forewarned about the outcome of it, and still go do it. Like you tell a child, don't put your finger in that socket. Don't put that fork in that socket. And they do everything but what, but what you said not to do. And, st and, st and lay down on the floor dead and electrocuted because they did what they t were told not to do. Folks are strange. They are coming against everything that would characterize any valid, godly instruction. The world has contaminated them out to make them believe that all this church stuff and this religious stuff don't mean nothing. You can be you, do what you want to do. They got no appetite for God unless there's a visitation. Desire for you, God, has to come from heaven. There has to be a compelling force from heaven. I don't know how to get to these minds. They are too far gone. We're looking at embedded insanity. And church folk just sit up in it just as insane as the rest of them. And you're trying to stimulate them to wake up, shake up, get up. And seek me while I may be found. Seek me so I can send rain on the earth. God, this thing is desperate. Ten days we're consecrating. Ten days we're separating. Ten days we're dedicating. Asking you, God, to please some kind of a way. Some kind of a way intervene in this failed human tragedy. This is failed human depravity. God. I don't have the vocabulary to express this. This is real. High school students look like animals. They're covered in tattoos from head to toe. Nobody would write all over themselves like this in their right mind. This is an invasion from the spirit world. It's an invasion of demons. Hundreds of millions of them. God, come on. Come on. Grace and mercy cries out against judgment. A vessel. We can be vessels. I'm serious. This is, so, this is so real now. This ain't nothing to laugh at. There's nothing funny. These people are going to die and go to hell forever. Unless some Christian somewhere says, you know what? I got to move to present my body. I got to be filled with the Holy Ghost for real now. I got to get this thing, the fruit and the gifts. I got to be a witness. I got to be on, I got to get out here. I got to have you invest in me, God, and trust me. We talk about trusting God. At some point, God wants to trust us with his power, with his anointing, to know we're not going to go crazy, not going to try to be lifted up and be somebody and all that little craziness. This thing here, God, this thing here is for real. And I know it's real because everybody sitting here in real terms can think of somebody that's like what I'm describing. You know it's real because you're looking at these people really like this. You have looked into the eyes of people and you know that they're not there. You know they have crazy. You know there's something wrong with them. They're full of rejection. They're full of fear. They're full of all this stuff, animosity toward God, all this stuff. Blaming God because I don't have a daddy. Blaming God because of what was done to me. Blaming God because of how, how somebody treated me. There's something wrong with people. God, come on. By way of live streaming the internet, wait these people look. They sit there in suspended animation every week looking at these broadcasts on Sunday and Wednesday and just suspended in animation, don't know what to do. Lost, there's a ball in high weeds. Going through religious motions and trying to post stuff on Facebook and lost. God, intervene. Have mercy. Glorify your son. Move in a supernatural way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It's going to wrap it up for this week. <clears throat> These are trying times. These are real times now, man. This is a different deal this time. You got to be a different breed of Christian now to make it through this. You got to ask God to let this happen to me for real. I don't have time to play with nobody. I need help. I, you look at your kids. You know, they're not, they're not normal, man. They're not normal. There's something wrong with them. Something wrong with their minds. Their lives dictate the fact that there's something wrong with their minds. They need help outside of themselves, and only God can bring that help. We need supernatural intervention. Remember, prayer every night, 641-715-3670, access code 409-367-POUND. 
Remember the conference in December for all the men. We're going to open up the women next month. If the men don't show up, the men, have, the men have to step aside. Let the women come on in and do the job. We got to get it done with or without you. So we'll open it up next month to the women, but we're looking for men, 1,000 men in, in December to show up December 29th through the 31st for this men's conference. All the information available at omegaministries.org. It's all there self-explained. You just got to click on and pull down the information. Remember, Dunamis Tabernacle supported. We need to get a facility open to train these folks to be a ground force for the end time end gathering. Ain't, ain't thinking about no mega church and all that other stupid junk. We need boots on the ground to do a job. This is for people that's going to take this kingdom to the masses by force personally. It's not my thing. It's our thing. It's your thing. You got to see it as I am the answer. You got to be the answer yourself. Don't follow anybody in this. You become the answer yourself. Become an answer to prayer. Remember the fast starting today, 10 days through the 30, 31st of October, as the world celebrate, celebrates stinking Halloween. Somebody got to stand against Halloween because a lot of kids died during this season. A lot of razor blades and apples, a lot of poison in candy. There's some dirty dogs down here. If a terrorist want to, wants to attack, he can poison a bunch of kids just using candy. I mean, this, 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 this is a dirty game, y'all. It ain't pretty. I wish it was, but it's not. We, got, we are the only thing holding back the devil from having complete autonomy on this planet, the church. If it wasn't for us, the devil would take this place over. If he had to put Hillary in the White House, I wouldn't be standing here right now because it would be hate speech. This is, it's just that close. It's razor thin now. Razor thin. What we're standing on for God to make one last move to save these people's souls. Get for real, man, because this ain't for the faint of heart. You got to be serious. We'll see you back here next week. Remember Bible study Wednesday night, 730 Eastern Standard Time. Stay on this fast. Now stay locked in. You got you to gotta lock in on this. You got to lock your mind in to sustain you in this. And we'll pray through and fast that way through the next 10 days, asking God to move supernaturally to save somebody's soul. Be blessed. See you back here next week. And stay out of the devil's matrix.